Hey, it's Shapes, and welcome to another expedition of the Anime Encyclopedia. I'm starting early today. Oh, early-ish. Because I realized I need to do, like, housekeeping. <laughs> like, really bad. So it might be, like, the first 15, 20, 30, I don't know how long it'll be, of working on actual um, housekeeping stuff. Like, importing things into the main list and stuff. But yeah... So it might be a little, uh, might be a little dull for a little while, a little while, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I still haven't read the latest Chainsaw Man chapter, but should be fine. Hello, Photogen. Hello, Kinoko. Good to see you guys. Yeah, so we have the main list up here. And what we need to do is import uh, <laughs> a lot of other lists. Like all of L, uh, down L, M, N, and O <laughs> into the main list. And then I didn't count. I think I have to do the short and long entries for uh, O at least. I don't know if I have to do N. Probably. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, it'll be a little bit more housekeeping uh, for a little while. But we can chill and talk and whatever. Hello. What's this? Hello, Weird Frog. Um, yeah, you see, I don't feel like I've seen you around in chat before. Um, this is the expedition of the Anime Encyclopedia where I've been reading uh, this entire book. <laughs> All of it. And comparing it to the third edition that came out in 2013. 20, 2015, actually. 2015. Because um, it's very fascinating. I and mean, I've been doing it since September of 2021. Been reading it. Uh, yeah, because it's got a lot of interesting stuff and um, hot takes and weirdness to it that I find very fascinating. Um, kind of as a reflection of our our fandom and community and everything, which I find interesting. Um, but this is going to be kind of some boring housekeeping stuff for a little while. But I figure I I don't know how long it would take me. It would, you know, I was I just came off of work. doing some work so <clears throat> but I still gotta do it I don't want to just jump into pee again and just repeat the habit 40 minutes of work left all front to back what what all the academics tell you what not to do in grad school <laughs> yeah <clears throat> I don't even know if these authors necessarily would have expected anyone to fully commit and read the whole thing never mind like take notes and share their experience with an audience you know but <clears throat> that's what makes it cool to me at least uh yeah so gosh i have so many notes of l and fucking ugh. okay so l highlights Were they positive on it? Ugh, maybe I shouldn't do this on stream. Because <laughs> I have to, I, I want to make sure I'm doing it in like a proper order and stuff. Oh boy. This might have, this This might not be the, the thing to do on stream, to be honest. Eh. Because there's so many other, like, Okay, so there's, yeah, okay, so there's, um, there's all of X and L. <laughs> L first number two. I don't know why I've made separate Word documents for all this stuff, I really don't. Uh... And then L of third. Yeah, there's no changes after that. Yeah, of course. Okay. M. There's M. All the chain M changes. M. N. Whew. And uh, oh, not 
not that many changes in O. That's all of it. Okay. <laughs> what new entries were there? L. I wouldn't know that in, hi in highlights. M. New additions. Wow, that's a lot of new additions. Whew. N. Not too many in this one. And O. A couple in this one. Seems interesting. Yeah, I like to think so. And there's a whole catalog and back catalog of <laughs> which is I don't know how long it is now. I I haven't tallied it, but I I certainly will when I finish it. Of <laughs> how long these and obviously I kind of need to cut some like because it streams and sometimes I'm just chilling and talking with the chat or whatever. So I might do some. I I thought about it, but it's so much work that it's sort of just like forget it. I think. Okay. Now we're on, and there's no removed entries that we found. Okay, positive for L, so. L highlights. Apparently they were positive, but I didn't write any fucking thing. So that's useless. I'll have to like put like, big freaking thing to fill in later just as a reminder for myself well yeah let's just do as uh, akazukin cha cha uh, they didn't sp they don't they spoil little witch sally but they do have changes to the loop on entry, of course. Let me just double check that. Those are odd choices that I wrote down. Okay. I'm just looking at my other notes. Sorry. Mm, positive. Four. No, those are negative. <laughs> See, this is why I don't use the big art, the, the main list anymore. <laughs> um, Fuma Clan. And then they do have a negative opinion on Lupin, but we'll get to that. And uh, they don't seem to have anything else. So let's check the first edition. First, number two, stupid. Sorry if I'm not checking chat too much right now, but I certainly will in a sec.
why exactly did I choose to do this on stream and not just start the stream at 6.30 or something? Uh, you can... You make reasonable... You make reasonable questions. I, I like... I need someone like you, uh, ra <laughs> rational person. I don't think anyone said that in chat. Thank God. <laughs> Spoil Sally for me, I need to know. Or Akko-chan. Annalisa, it's, it's so obvious. It's self-evident. I don't really, I don't remember. I think I was spoiled with Akko, but I don't quite remember. So thankfully I don't know yet, but surely it's the same ending. Um, okay, so that's N, and this is O. All right. How many negative opinions? <laughs> uh, going back to L highlights. They do have uh, a loop on one. And you know what's gonna be the fun part? Or kind of the maybe not so fun part, but may kind of maybe fun. You know those big like Mac like images of um, anime posters of like recommendation charts that people make? I'm gonna, I'm thinking of making that for these, for their, for their uh, positive reviews, negative reviews, mixed reviews and dismissive reviews. For people to kind of easily look through and be like, they suck, they hated that one, or they disliked that one, and yada yada yada. I think that would be appealing. An appealing way to present that information, at least. Okay, mixed opinions. I don't think they had any in the highlights. No. No. L first. Whew. First. L second. Oh, I don't even have the fucking third edition L's. I'm so stupid. I don't have any of the I've been oh fuck me. <laughs> I'll I'll enter those in a second. I am a fool. This is the second. I am a fool. But I'll, uh, I will rectify that momentarily. I was wondering, I was like, why how is this going so fast? <laughs> Stupid! Yes, sir. Okay. N. And O. O game key. Sorry if you're not seeing much besides the <laughs> occasional entering of information. <laughs> Okay, let's go to dismissive, and then I'll loop back and do all the third edition stuff. Hmm. Or fill out the odd choices and everything, and because I just feel like the amount of just the, my desktop and stuff. I'm, I have a lot of notepads open, so. <laughs> um. Hello, all. Oh, is this '90s move music? Love it. Yeah, weird pro proc. It is. Um, it's either a playlist of this music, or um, Cold Steel, which is like a playlist of like. Pat Labor 2 music and Metal Go Solid, stuff like that. That's kind of the stuff that we listen to here. Does it end like the modern Star vs. Magical P Powers Magical Girl show with the genocide of an entire fantasy land off screen? No. I don't think so. The that's very that's expecting a lot out of Sally and Akko, which like that makes them sound like they have plot. Which they, they kinda don't. That's not a negative. They're episodic. Macro thumbnails, yeah. 
but how much is going into each mosaic? Because the good might be minuscule, indigenous, it might be way massive. <laughs> I feel like they've been pretty even, actually. I think when we get to the end of it and we look at everything, I have a good feeling that they'll be pretty um, uh, evenly sized. But they're going to be big regardless. Yeah, they're going to be fucking massive. <laughs> Which is what makes me be like, maybe I don't want to do that, but fuck it. I finished Remy and also went with the wind, watching Tenchi Muyo now. Nice, Greg. You're going through it. It's really interesting the different stuff that you're watching. It doesn't feel like there's any particular rhyme or reason. But that's okay. I'm sure there is, and I just can't tell from those three titles. <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing dismissive in the, in the L highlights. L first. Dishmishiv. And fucking forget this, like, asterisks and, um, colon, um, what is it called? Asterisks and, and, sem and dash. Which they're supposed to indicate third edition or first edition. After, I'm not even, I don't think I'm even looking at that anymore. I wanted to see if they, if they were more broadly negative in the, in the book, in the first edition, than they were in the third edition. I think that was why I was keeping track. Um... I still might, but it's just a lot now <laughs> to, to parse to figure out which is uh, which is an old ver uh, first edition and which one's a third edition. Because I would have to know I would have to very, have a very encyclopedic knowledge of that. I, you know, maybe I don't need an encyclopedic knowledge when I have an encyclopedia. <laughs> Stupid! Yes, sir. Um, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> now we're on the no changed opinions that I could find in that, in that, uh, ch chunk. Short and long, I will do in a minute or other time. Hold on. So if you don't know, the short and long articles are to, de to designate which are, con which are, which are articles that like they only spent two sentences on describing and which ones did they spend like they made a huge essay out of because that leads to some interesting uh, results that we've noticed over the over the course of us doing this um yeah some examples of like oh certain directors don't really get a whole lot versus other directors and stuff like that spoilers because yes this book spoils a lot of anime and i'm keeping track of how of which ones and how many so you could be like, spoilers for all of these anime. <laughs> uh, yeah, for um, Sally the Witch. And I'm just uh, double checking. No. I do have the, um, the short and long ones listed for L, though. Hold on. I actually already did it for M, so that's good. Never mind. I'll just have to do N and O at some point after this. Uh, first, maybe just pick some of the major pillars. Yeah, maybe. Some like, uh, yeah, I guess. I like do. I like being thorough though. <laughs> Pattern. They were cool. I've been watching Nadia. Just got four about four episodes left. Awesome. I'm hoping you're enjoying that. Did you happen? You happen to um. You watch through the uh, the island arc and Africa arc in that midpoint there. It wouldn't be watching Nadia without it, you know. It's a very fascinating um, aspect to that show. Love Nadia, one of my favorites. Rapidly changing my opinion on spoiler culture when it leads to this sort of stuff. Yeah, it just depends what you use it for, you know. If you're making a point, then that's important and that's fair. But like, <laughs> if you don't have a reason for it, why on earth? Actually, wait, they did have a changed opinion in L. Several changed opinions. I'm a dummy. I am a dum-dum, I didn't even look. Goodness, changed opinions. They have several in L. They have Labyrinth of Flames, Legend of Blue Wolves, and Lesson of Darkness. They literally have all of those as uh, new changed opinions. 
Let me double check that the others. Well, okay, let me just okay, let me just highlight the spoilers as well. <laughs> I have to go back up, up and down. <laughs> Long spoiler. Okay. <clears throat> No changed in this part. Three new spoilers. M. No changed, but here's the spoilers. No changed, here are the spoilers. I didn't even write changed. <laughs> didn't even happen. And here are the spoilers for O. O. I really like it. The island arc was odd, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, that's good. I actually love the island arc, not Africa arc though. <laughs> yeah. I would be hard pressed to know anyone that likes that one. Just because how. Because at least island has this like shock to it. Being like, what? Y you know? Uh, yeah, sorry. Let me... My favorite part is when Gene falls off a cliff and dreams of making amazing inventions and Nadia praising him. It is funny. They are. It's a different show. It's a very different show, but it is interesting. There is some. There is stuff worth talking about and worth. It's fa It's fascinating, really. And then yeah, Africa. And then like the episode. I think that it's included in Africa. I or I don't know if it's in be in between Island and Africa or if it's after Africa. But it's the recap episode. Which I do, like, I like inventive versions of recap episodes, like Wolf's Reign's four recap episodes are really interesting, actually. Um, but then that one was just sort of cringe. It's okay, it's kind of fun, but... <laughs> it has, it, it's partially cringe, it's half, half cringe, or a third cringe. It's like it's in its bloodstream or something. It's got a little bit of cringe in it. To me, at least. And I don't hate cringe altogether. I was like, this anime must not make me cringe or it is bad. It's not like that, but <laughs> it's just something to be aware of. <laughs> Hi, Shaves. How's it going? Good to see you, Hugs. Uh, I'm currently doing some housekeeping. Before we read uh, the start the letter P, I'm actually filling out all the all of my data into the main document. Consolidating it. I also have to count some long and short entries after this. Yeah, I remember thinking the change in tone was jarring, but actually enjoying the la the island episodes. They were cute. Yeah. Is this One Piece spoilers? Because I'm reading. What? No. I haven't... I don't think I've spoiled One Piece. Not even this... Not even the encyclopedia spoils One Piece. Ano despises the Africa arc. He seems to be mixed on island arc, though. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Good to see you, Fullwood Man. Bobo -bo is a fun recap episode. Really? Oh, you know what? I would expect that from that show. That show seems very inventive and creative. I haven't seen it yet, but um, seems like fun. Recaps should have fun and reframe themselves as dumb hallucination. Yeah, I actually really like Wolf's Reign that took itself very seriously. And each episode was narrated and was framed from the, the each of the four characters' perspectives and kind of describing their journey and how they felt at certain moments. Which I felt were really, was really interesting, actually, because I felt you gleaned more from that character, um, which was important at that point in the show, I thought. Recap should have, yeah. Pretty busy, might not comment. Might, that's fine. I might not have <laughs> to do, because I'm doing a lot of busy work early on, at least. I just came in, well, I don't know. Oh, that's fair. We're talking about Nadia, not One Piece. I just, I, I hear weird arc names, and I'm like, it sounds like One Piece. Their names are weird. Yeah, you know what's funny with One Piece? It ha I always got confused with Thriller Bark, Impel Down, and Punk Hazard. There's something about the names of those three arcs that just feel very interchangeable to me. And sometimes I get a I sometimes they disappear in my head of like, oh, what is that called? Thriller No, Punk Hazard. You know, I, I get they those three for some reason blur together for me. Any's lobby might be in there as well. And then Nenny is the best clip show episode. Oh no, that's not interesting. that's interesting. Man, I'm getting weirdly steamed on Ano's behalf with a lot of recent hate for auteur theories singling out Ano, ironically, when a lot of his staff really want him in a leadership role. You know, I don't think it's nece I don't think there's um, animosity towards him being an auteur. 
I think it's just trying to be honest about whether, you know, about how you're using it as marketing, which it is. I think Stephen, I think, I don't know if you might be referring to Stephen's Chanel Truman video, um, which broadly covers that idea. I think he makes fantastic points about that. I still wouldn't like, I still wouldn't reject auteur theory altogether. Um, Cause I really do like talking about a, a person's work collectively, even though plenty of different staff come and go with them all the time. And that does make noticeable differences in their work. For example, Mamoru Hosoda um, having a particular script writer for certain movies and then not having that script writer for other movies, there's a noticeable absence or a distinct um, difference, you could say. I really don't have any pattern to watch. I just want what I watch, just that they I received positively, positively from their intended audience or any audience. Yeah, that's fair. If you play the One Piece Pirate Warriors game, it makes me remembering the narc game, narc arc games easier. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't have any problem with it now that I've read it, but I've watched it. God, watched it. Read it. I mean, oh. I'm so glad. <laughs> I swear I like the anime more, guys. The Koji Reading App episodes are good, too. The first one is a game show that features the author, Obana, on it. All she says is Obana here for a few times. That's great. That's actually really cool. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. I'd rather not bring that up since I've had poor interactions, but... Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's too bad. But yeah, the points of certain staff have noticeable content. Mm -hmm. People always signal out more popular names regardless of how much input they had on the product. Yeah, that's the thing. It's the same thing with Gainax, too. When they have this name on this whatever OVA because they did second key animation on it, suddenly it's, oh, what, what's that? What's up? Ooh, you know. <laughs> I keep confusing the name of Annie's Lobby with Intel Down. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And then, yeah. I'll, okay. Odd choices. A lot. This is really, like, the bulk. <laughs> the vast bulk. Of, oh my god, the KyoAni article. Oh. I'd have to go back and look. I think it was the whole thing. But I'd have to look at my stream because I think I read that out loud on stream for the first time. I think. I don't remember. But man. <laughs> I don't even remember what was bad about it, but I, I got bad va I have bad juju and like, like almost PTSD being like, oh yeah. I don't remember specifically though what they said. You are an odd fellow. Actually, uh, El highlights, I think. This Lupin. Okay, so Lupin had a couple, but like. These ones don't seem that bad. Because <laughs> I'm looking at it. It's like, okay. They just, you know, rubbed me off the wrong. <laughs> rubbed, me off. rubbed me the wrong way at the time. Okay. Odd choices for LA. Okay. I, I always like quoting that um, uh, steamed hams thing. You are an odd fellow, but I must admit, you are an odd fellow. <laughs> YouTube poop. <laughs> I don't know how often I've talked about on here my uh, sincere admiration for YouTube poop. And how it's like, I mean, I could never make one of those. I feel like it would be really bad. Uh, and I don't know what would overcome me from making one, but man, it, they're so good. <laughs> I don't feel like I have the, the, the thinking of that. I just don't have the thought process. I always don't find myself to be all that funny with, um, videos, you know, sometimes, sometimes it hits and it's funny, but I, I don't, I don't know. I just don't like gear myself that way. Okay. Good ones going down until and then i'll just get to the third editions afterwards just it's easier for me uh, i don't think there's any good ones though for the ones that i read in notable nope that's fine okay oh no not that one okay okay <laughs> oof Just 
the list of uh, articles that I thought I liked. That was pretty... It was on my game during M. Wow. These are all articles that I thought were actually really good. <laughs> Only one for O. Sheesh. Um... Yes, I like. I love building this list up. The the now interested in list. Um, J K L. Yeah, okay. Yeah, L first. I'm now interested in because reading their articles, I just learn more about anime. Just reading the book, you know, I do learn more about anime. I don't think it's a complete waste of time that I'm doing this, but. There's a lot of things that stick out to me as someone that's been in deep with it for a number of years now. That, you know, the the negative stuff just sticks out to me more. But I've never I would never call this a negative experience. As much frustration and uh consternation, I guess, this has given me over time. I I uh especially being in chat and talking and everything it's so it, oh man ones i've heard before uh i have heard of lady georgie before and was interested in it now that they talked about it it's like oh. <laughs> i had heard of these but made me want to check them out i had heard of these the articles made me want to check it out. Nothing for N. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and one for O. Sheesh. Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Oh. And I do have some trends and stuff. And I've been keeping a list <laughs> of weird words. Because their whole thing about like not wanting to use uh, these fan terms like hentai or um, or otaku even though they use them plenty of I feel like they do if you hit F on the encyclopedia they do use them plenty of times so they're not just you know but they they made like a, a weird point to, to mention this like we're not going to use these words you know and uh but at the same time, they're going to confuse their audience, their readership by just being like, yeah, here's our vocabulary. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> it's like, what are any of these words? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm bullying them for having a, 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 a distinguished vocabulary. But like, it was just because they pointed out that they don't want to use Yuri or Yaoi or Shonen or Shoujo. You know, they just don't want to bring up these words, but then they're going to use all these words. And their argument was that, like, oh, we don't want to confuse our, our readership. It's like... Anyway. Uh, it's more that Ano is the punching bag, but much easier. Earlier, he's been way excusing, like, Miyazaki's authoritarian studio practices, so it just feels like punching down. Sure. Is there any uh, particular names we're in? P names we're anticipating? I haven't looked yet, but I'm sure there are that we haven't. That was like, oh yeah, of course. But I can't think of any right now. It could be a long change in opinion over time, but it's like accusing just Anna of. I'm gonna put the chat over here so it looks like I have my face and everything, because I keep seeing my face over there. Anyway. Uh, sure. They could be me of uh, their friends. You're an odd fellow. You steam a good ham, right? They're definitely until Anna went to live action. No, don't worry. Just make YouTube poops the sex jokes and let... That's the thing. I can't. I just don't feel like it would ever be funny and it, I would never post it. Even though it would be funny and I would... It, you, know. <laughs> you need to watch Unlimited Steam Hams. You'll probably love it. That crap is why YouTube's poops died. It, they didn't die! They didn't die. They're not dead. I have to go, but it was nice being here for a while. It's good to see you, Photogen. I gotta say, I get distracted every time by your rope poster, one of my favorite films. Awesome, yeah. It's uh, the play that I directed, so I'm more of a I'm partial to the play personally. But yeah, number what numbers still around. 
number one. Yeah, gotta break out of the thesaurus. Oh yeah, people getting heated about shoujo eye being Western term, but I can't can't actually verify it was true or just revisionistic. Oh, why would that be confusing? It's the end of the encyclopedia. If you're expo expected to write on this stuff, it's supposed to be for people that get it. It's not like the outside. That's the thing. They were expecting outside. This is like for like people. I, it's weird because I I think I feel like I've mentioned this even from the beginning. I was like, the most people who would be reading this are existing anime fans but they're writing it for the non-fans and that's why they have the quotes in the back for neil gaiman english script for princess monoke sandman and american gods i'm not saying neil gaiman is a non-anime fan but he's certainly a little more normie <laughs> and I, I, you know carl Masick's not no normie i i respect carl Masick a lot frederick l scott the author of manga manga in dreamland japan and the mark schilling screen international yeah. I guess I'll take that that statement back about the people in the back, <laughs> the the the, uh, the quotations in the back being for you know for normies. So it's, it's for a lot of general audience, but it's more the lacking consistency. Why don't they just have a glossary at the beginning? Then they do. They have a glossary in the third edition. They literally have like a, a glossary called Argot and Jargon. I think we've written it, but what newbie is buying a hundred and fifteen dollars encyclopedia of anime? It's not that. It was twenty five dollars. <laughs> At least it has that on the the back. The, this here, I don't know if that's how much I paid for it. I'm pretty sure that's about how much I paid for it. It was off of Amazon. Twenty five dollars. In the third edition, I might be like forty or something, but I have that as a digital form, so I don't know if that was how much I paid for it. Carl gets unfairly lumped with four kids. Oh, yeah. Very unfairly lumped in. Fans don't get it. They really don't get it. When he generally had way more respect for localizing titles. Yeah, some of the marketing wound up attracting otaku who just want to check on how they represent it. Yeah. Well, why didn't they just add that then? I thought this was supposed to be all encompassing. I will quote, you know, this is me off the cuff and everything. But when a video gets made, the ultimate video that this gets you know what once that comes out uh it'll be a lot more worded specifically it'll be a lot more succinct i think but yeah that's the idea um right let me see about other trends that i wrote down highlights trends This is just general overall observations that I want to um, try to test given the the data that I'm collecting and see if I can try to it's kind sort of like the main what kind of main points am I going to make in this video basically. Oh yeah, okay. So that should be it for O. N I think that might be it, but let me just double check. Yeah, N, N was both first and third edition, so that should be good. Uh, M was first, so I need a I need M third. Or was M that was all of M? Or was that all of M? Let me just see if I can glean uh, any titles for that I know are from recent years. Mononoke, maybe the most glowing review, good one. Yeah, that's from third edition. So I think M first is actually just all of M, so I should be good on that one. Okay, and now I definitely need L third, and then L rest of third. Which is so stupid. L was such a fucking mess, dude. Okay. I have to go back up. Positive. L M. I'll put it right here. Mm 
Wait. I put that twice. That's in there twice. Love Chinip. Wait. Love. Yeah. Hold on. What? What? LDI. No, so wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, so le I know love complex. I see it in there twice. Love lessons. Ugh, what a mess. What a mess. It's not in alphabetical order anymore either, because of the way I've did done this here. Ugh. I will do that uh, off stream at some point. I have no idea. God. Um. Yeah, let me just put it like over here or whatever. Yeah, I think that's all of them. Yeah, okay. So negative L late. And just control F. Okay, so that's not in here, so that's good. So I'll put this at the end of L. All right. You got Lucky Star. And you got, this is sort of been. And then for mixed. You got all these. And these. And then dismissive. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I was like, where's my cursor? <laughs> uh, L. Wait, dismissive I have, I have Lucky Star and dismissive and Negative. Ah! What happened? <laughs> it, it's definitely not dismissive. It's negative. It's way more negative. Anyway. God damn it. I'm such a mess. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> God, we have to go to that too. Okay. Choices J J K L So much. How am I ever supposed to parse this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it was supposed to play. I'm sorry. Okay. I have heard of this show before, but I am now interested in it. And... Sorry, I have not checked the chat in a bit, but I will in a moment. I just want to finish this. 
L. because I did um, highlights in the last time I did that L. It was so stupid. Just went hopped around a bunch. Foolish. Okay, I got that done and that done and that done. I think we're good. Woo! Hmm. All right, let me, let me do this. And now, uh... It's not it. Ah! I have a ton of, like, these layers and stuff. I just want the O. Oh. Sorry, I haven't checked chat still. Uh, I'm such a mess right now. <laughs> this is all window capture and window capture. There we go. Jeez. Ugh. Sorry, I'll check chat now. Check in chat. Should actually put it over here. <laughs> Carl gets some failure lump. Yeah, some of the marketing. Low white. Voltan has way more in common with 4K steps than Robotech. Oh, yeah. A succinct six hour video. No! This video will be under 30 minutes. It will. And uh, the, it is supposed to be short. The whole reason I do the stream is so that the video that is the end result is not long. And the, the appeal, the intended appeal, my idea, is that, like, you want me to prove it? You want me to, like, veracify all my claims and study more? Here's 50 hours. <laughs> or it's, it's more than 50 at this point. But, I mean, again, I still have the idea of, like, trimming all the streams. Yeah. <laughs> trimming all the streams. God. Can you imagine? Canadian Amazon got it for 112. Oh! So sorry, weird proc. <laughs> Heading out. Hey, Shaves, was curious what you think of the faded pastels aesthetic of the 2000s anime. Which 2000s anime? Just 2000s anime in general? Because I do enjoy... I, I like art direction from all sorts of decades. I think it just kind of depends on the show. Um, certainly, when it says the 2000s with Toei... Um, the stuff I really like with Ochimaja Doremi, One Piece, Digimon is more of the nine, more like, no, it's about, it's, it's in the same, like, early 2000s, 2000 to 2002, um, Ashino Naja is also very pretty, but in terms of the faded pastel aesthetic, I, I might be miscalculated of those particularly being like that, I guess. Um, I guess it depends on the show what you mean. Have a good one. Hi, Shapes. Good to see you, Mia. Off topic, but there's a, a channel that re-uploads all the unlimited Steamed Hands episodes. Oh, okay. I'm listening to you while I make a list, so this is great. Nah, I love I love list making. Maybe too much. As you can see, I am way too into making lists. Good lord. Uh, I'm listening to this while writing a script for my own Lupin Part 1 review in comparison to Cagliostro. Fun, fun. I will not tell you the videos that I am aware of that have made similar videos because I'm excited to look looking forward to yours. Be sure to, um, I don't know, link it to me or make sure I'm just, uh, I'll make sure I'm subscribed to your channel or whatever. Let me see if I can go to channel. I don't, I don't think I can uh, change my, uh, my channel to the one I subscribe on, but I'll just, uh, I'll subscribe to my current channel. <laughs> I don't know if it's a blog that you're writing or if it's for a video, but whatever. Uh, nice stuff. Right, so. 
I have you on background while I do schoolwork, so it's all good. Definitely need to make some reaction clips to montage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Just the clipping this sort of thing. I don't feel like this is necessarily an appealing format. It's a utilitarian format for me. This is a format that I can use for the, you know, to catalog all of this stuff. And it works. But it's not like a pretty video. You know, I don't, I don't feel like it's anything that I can use to make into shorts all that easily. I don't know. I don't feel as good about it in that sense. I was looking through this book and noticed they're missing almost every anime Kotaro Ishidate worked on. Tesagare Bukasumono is a masterpiece and had three seasons by 2015. Wow. A video of my first anime review. Hell yeah, we had proct. Yeah, looking for, that's awesome. Hopefully I catch it. Hopefully I catch it when it comes out. Um, really? I wasn't familiar with that, Kinoko. I'm not even familiar with that series that you're talking about, so. Let me see. Um, Kotaro Ishidate. I found him. Oh. Oh, he does her voice acting roles. Okay. So he's a series comp. Does the scripts. Director. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I've not really seen or heard of too many of these. I don't think so. Any of them. Hmm. And yeah, you're saying, well, yeah. A lot of them are, are past the year that they would, their cutoff year. But, um... I think their cutoff year was like 2013 technically and then and then like there was some select stuff from 14 that they picked they do have GDGD fairies which is a series comp I know it's not director but I don't know what you would consider his main canon I'm sorry I haven't just, I've, I've put this on I do this. I do this all the fucking time. These are so. This is his stories. G G D G D. I'm pretty sure they have this one. Um, I don't know if you have the digital version or not. That if you're um, where's uh, I like going by the katakana just so that they they don't fuck me with their own stupid. Bakusteji idol. That's definitely the okay. Okay, stage idol. Nothing. Osaka Okan. Nothing. Chokyu. I think I spelled that right. Straight title. <laughs> Nothing. Tokyo Rule. Nothing. Tesagare. Nothing. And then Encore, and yeah, they probably don't have anything after that. A shame. I thought it went to 2015, I have the physical book. I don't think there's any 2015 titles in it. I think the latest I saw was Shirobako. That I can remember. Um, but yeah, they pretty much, I think they say in the intro that their cutoff point is a certain time. Let me look at the publisher's note, etc. Uh,
three-dimensional titles. I'm just looking for the, the year cutoff point. They're just explaining their system of categorization. Formats and running time. Damn it, come on. <laughs> Terminology. Slang. I think their argument against me, like, pointing out these esoteric words is that they would be like, that. those are at least actual words and not slang. Like, okay. The third edition published in 2015 contains all the changes made in the second edition, as well as over 100 intermediate corrections. Made for the 2012 ebook version. It also adds entries for over a thousand new titles released since 2006. Some older works that did not previously have their own dedicated entry. And some further 5,000 alterations throughout the pre-existing text. Upgrading staff lists. Adding details of later installments of ongoing franchises. Dates of death for individuals and similar corrections. Several new thematic areas. zero-sum game there's always something else we could have added or some clarification we could have pursued undoubtedly there will be omissions and solicisms but it represents the culmination of all our available hours a snapshot of what of where we were and what we knew on the day that this book was printed yeah for researchers and students that alone should present a starting point for discourse and dialogue something at the very least for you to argue with here I am. <laughs> I still can't find it. Ah. Uh. I feel like they confirmed what their cutoff point was in the ANN podcast. Maybe I'm wrong. In the hope that none of the anime audience of 2015 would be around to notice the lack of new ideas. I don't know. I tried. I can't find it. Oh well. Okay. I have the physical book. I can't do analytical videos myself. I prefer the memes. Hey, that's fair. So I'm going to save as P. And now. Use this as a template. I don't know why I have to keep remaking the, pen the template and not just have one saved. Because I'm a dummy. A real dum dum. You know what I realized? Before I do P, I still have to do the long and short of N and O. <laughs> Dang. <clears throat> I actually don't want to do it right now. Because I've done this, I've, uh, I've wasted enough time. And, uh, didn't waste any time, but it was just done this long enough. And, uh, I might be confused on certain things. I just don't want to do it right now. I just don't want to do it right now. We're back. We're on P. And dang it. Okay. First entry. What is it? What is it? What is it? Okay. P. Okay. It's a uh, PI perverse investigations. Great. Very cool. Uh, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm 
2003. That was a, an hour, actually. Exactly an hour since I started streaming. Okay. Uh, and I also just realized I want to have a timeline for myself. I want to know how many entries there are. And then we can break it down. One, two, three, four. Nope, that's three. <laughs> mm, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 197 entries in P. Come on. <laughs> and, um, Hugs, when you mentioned earlier of like, oh, is there any notable entries and I couldn't really think of any? That was stupid. I just wasn't, I, it's very head empty when I'm streaming. <laughs> it very isn't something like I could think of, I guess. But, you know, you got Pokemon, you got Precure. You got Princess Tutu, you got Perfect Blue, you got at least four Ghibli movies. That's probably a, probably a good spread. <laughs> Puele, uh, Puele Madoka Magica, Psycho Pass. It's a pretty big, it's a pretty significant letter. Project Aiko. Man. I was just scrolling through all of them. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dummy. Fool. Dummy fool. <clears throat> well, got those to look forward to. So, gosh, what the hell do I want to do? Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Nearly 200 entries. I guess we could do 50. And try to go for 50 tonight. 
Let's get the 50 tonight. So how many will that be? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Three Satoshi Cone things. Paprika, Perfect Blue, Paranoia Agent. <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> I have to recount, I'm sorry. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, for
In a claustrophobic future world of Bura reconstructs old images and archives from the past. His latest project turns out to be a music video whose singer offers up a message from the moon where she, he has just arrived to dwellers on the rust-covered earth. Realizing that the location of the recording seems familiar, the archivist resolves to climb through the abandoned upper levels of the underground homes. In an interesting, albeit derivative, sci-fi short. Clearest debt is to voices of a distant star whose attitude, length, and tone it often mirrors. As with so many modern homebrew anime, it lifts plot elements from earlier fan favorites, like in this case, the Cowboy Bebop episode, Speak Like a Child, and the underlying conceit of Megazone 23. Do we know that? That Yoshiura, um, Yasuhiro Yoshiura, like took from Cowboy Bebop specifically. I say, like, they're just making this offhand observation, like, oh, that reminds me of that, of Megazone. Do we know if that was what he was taking from? I want to see Pepper Poon. I've seen it a while ago. I don't remember much about it. We all just need to gain the world, though. Mm -hmm. So much good stuff. Why can't I have unlimited time boost? Yeah. Well. The finite of time is one of its appeals. I don't want to explain something so deep. <laughs> a singer's trip to the moon is the starting point of Alice. Although this is probably a coincidence. Yeah, like all the... <laughs> I'm going to write that, actually. Especially because Bebop is only a cult hit in Japan. So true, so true. I do want to point out in the spoiler list of things that they they d deliberately do not spoil where they could have. And so then it contrasts to other places where they have. I'd say it was ultimately positive. Uh... Panda and the Magic Serpent. So, okay, wait a minute. The first entry in the first edition is Pa Man from 1967. But it's not listed in the third edition here, at least in this area. Oh my god, 221 results because it includes fucking spaces for Pa Man. Stupid. Wait a minute. And then that is the fucking. Uh... Hmm. 
Tada Nagahama. He can't have directed that many things. I know Nagahama, but... 17 results. Combat V. The director. Gutsy Frog. 77. Director. Director. Wait a minute. Nope. Paw Man, I got it. Where is it? Did they just move Panda and Paw Man? It, they, they, okay. Gotcha. I'll just read that entry now. That in the freaking description. Yeah, yeah, that's what they have. Might be permanent. Thank you. Problem is, there's at least like 400 great anime that came out around that time. Yeah, anime games have been the only outlet to get my anime fix lately. Wow. Not a big deal, but Okay. Interesting. Persona! Persona 4, the animation. And Persona Trinity Soul, Persona 3. Kind of lumped into one article. The Persona role-playing game series is rooted in the same mythology and storyline that has already been adapted into anime form as Digital Devil Story and Tokyo Revelation. It had, however, drifted far away from Aya Nishitani's original novels by the time the franchise was rebooted as the game Revelations Persona in 1996, and still further when Persona itself was inevitably adapted into anime form, somewhat tardily after the third iteration of the rebooted game. Parentheses, see Street Fighter 2 for another franchise that began in one medium with a numerical title, 
that referred to its origins in another. To the great annoyance of the anime encyclopedist, its, its success has led to a series of sequels and spin-offs, released out of chronological order, and with an often tenuous continuity that only makes sense to people who have played the games. Despite this disordered narrative, we shall do our best to make sense of it, paying it the undeserved compliment of treating it like a standalone TV show, even though, like Final Fantasy, the separate iterations of the story are often only vaguely connected. Paying it the undeserved compliment of treating it like a standalone show. What? I have nothing I have known nothing about the Persona series by the way very little so I will not know any discrepancies. If, if you guys know any, if I, I'm gonna read this whole article. If you notice any discrepancies, let me know because I will not be able to pick up on any of it. Undeserved compliment of treating it like a standalone TV show, even though like a Final Fantasy, the separate iterations are often only vaguely connected. Not to be that guy, but Shin Megami Tensei and Persona are two different continuities. That's such a mean comment on deserved praise. I like Persona. <clears throat> the TV show Persona Trinity Soul is based on the 2006 release Shin Megami Tensei 3, the Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3, Notably, the first iteration to be translated in a non-boulderized form. It is set a decade after the events of the game, with the suggestion that a city has been plagued by dark supernatural forces ever since a great disaster that claimed the lives of Shin and Jun Kazuo's pa Kazuto's parents and Jun's, twist and Jun's twin sister. The brothers are reunited with their significantly older sibling, Ryo, who is now the chief of police. Something about their, new, about their hometown seems to create an environment that makes it possible for people to manifest their persona, inner selves, as powerful spirit forces. Ryo is deep into an investigation of mysterious deaths and occurrences in the city, which he attributes to a criminal persona group involved in the disaster that killed the boy's parents. An incident forces Shin's persona to emerge, and he realizes that Ryo is aware of the supernatural events affecting the area. Others are manifesting personas too, even at school. It looks impressive when Shigenori Soejima's designs for the game retaining their elegance when tweaked for animation. Combat sequences are good too. Unfortunately, the story is incoherent and confusing, with too many of the same old high school tropes and too much vague, mysterious dialogue. And it takes too long to get go. It takes so long to get going that even diehard fans of the game may snooze off. This is such magazine writing, such magazine writing, right? Like you're writing a review of like, what do you, who are you to make those fucking commentary on what the fans think? A Persona Three movie subtitled S Spring of Birth, based on the P. Persona 3 manga was released in autumn 2013. It has an entirely new team at the helm. Before I go into Persona 4, I'm going to make that, that note about uh, mixed for Persona 3. Looks impressive. Story is incoherent and confusing. Same old high school tropes. Takes so long to get going. Even diehard fans 
of the game may snooze off. Nitpicking, but Persona 2 Part 2 got a pretty faithful translation. Part 1 was skipped for reasons that will take too long to explain, though we later got Part 1 on the PSP. Critics that were reviewing the new Mario movie sound just like these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't actually speak for fans if you're not one. You just, you, you just can't. You really can't. And if you're not a fan, like, you can be transparent about that, but do not speak for the fans in that case. In the TV series Persona 4, Japanese teenager Yu Narukami, unnamed in the game but identified here, moves from Tokyo to a quiet country town to stay with his police detective uncle and becomes entangled in a weird world of murders, changing weather patterns, and a TV show that's trying to pull him into its, uni into, into its universe. You and his friends must find their personas, their other halves inside the TV screen, and prevent more destruction in their own world. The idea that in another reality you have special powers and a vital purpose has been exploited by shows from Sailor Moon to Vision, Vision of Escaflone. The idea that in another reality you have special powers and a vital purpose has been exploited by shows from Sailor Moon to Escaflone. I, I actually rewatched Escaflone recently, and I'm struggling to find out what they mean by that. Where the idea that in another reality you have special powers and a vital purpose. I guess by vital special powers and vital purpose, it, it's because they're conflating Sailor Moon, where it has like. It, it's because in Sailor Moon they have like the the previous life of Usagi, like she's the reincarnation of this princess. I know it's kind of spoilery, sorry. Um, like this is reincarnation of this princess, and kind of boiling it to the same thing as Escaflone, where Hitomi and her prescient um, my uh, fortune telling abilities are actually tangible and. She gets. She kind of has her own powers and importance in the narrative. Because, and then conflating that with Persona Four, where they're just trying to find their other halves in this, in the TV screen. I guess it's just so, boiler like, down to its barest essentials that you're erasing the nuance of all three of those shows. It's just really confusing. It's really hard to talk about the anime adaptations of Persona because I haven't really watched them. I've only played the games. I watched P5, but I've heard the other ones aren't great. P4 anime is great. The golden anime is not so much. Oh, I've heard something like that. Sail Moon isn't an isekai. Why that word? Hmm. I don't know. The displaced teen hero is found in myriad places from Princess Mononoke's early Japan to Full Metal Alchemist Conqueror of Shambhala's Nazi Europe. Why specifically that movie? The displaced teen hero is found in Prince in Full Metal Alchemist Conqueror of Shambhala's Nazi Euro Europe. Huh? See me my hand? The fuck? Just for reference, personas are basically strand sand, so their comparison makes even less sense. Hmm. That's some pretty major spoilers for O3. Yeah, I guess. Specifically of uh, Shambhala, but yeah. Where Persona 4, the animation scores, where where P4, the animation scores, is in is in spinning this handful of old tropes into an interesting pattern. The opening credits play up one of the show's key features: the difference between the TV world and the real. The mix of 2D and 3D is one trick is a tricky one to pull off in anime. But lead 2D house D Station was supposed was supported by some of the top names in the anime TV business including AIC, Gainax, and Sunrise. Again, with conflating like the, the secondary key animation. There are a few problems with the animation. An occasional over-reliance on still frames, but not enough to spoil your enjoyment of an otherwise entertaining show. I was positive about it. The classic... This is like the, the catchphrase. 
This is like one of the biggest catchphrases of history. At least they're positive about it. An unscreened 26th episode was included in the DVD and Blu-ray release. A compilation movie, Persona 4, Factor of Hope, was screened in Japan of summer 2012. And a spin-off manga followed that November. That's it. Positive about Persona 4. Mm, actually, I'll, I'll mention this part. Uh... This will be a pretty major point actually about spoilers because not only are they spoiling things within their own articles but then they're spoiling other anime within different articles <laughs> and look i can under i can give them some benefit of the doubt where no one will i don't think hutaro is even physically available to watch like we don't even have physical media of it or, or it's lost or something so like no one will have known that that's just something they read in the in an article somewhere and then they would argue that i would imagine that fmao3 is such a well-known ubiquitous example that it's like it's like spoiling star wars or something but still just the fact that you are aware of that that they can do that is is bizarre um Uh, yeah, so odd. I will just say generally Persona. totally skipped fucking i i totally went oh down to persona because i went to perchan and i'm supposed to be on fucking <laughs> damn it i'm supposed to be on panda and the magic serpent oh god none none of us noticed we are fools stupid fucking come on and then uh mix It is part of the current reading we were supposed to do anyway, but still. <laughs> Enough of this being out of order shit. Sorry, future me, whoever, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. The beautiful snake princess Bainyang. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I was just about to remind you. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, falls in love with the young boy Zhu Xian. I have no idea how to pronounce that either. His parents made him put the, the snake back in the fields where he found her, but he can never. But he never stops missing his pet. Years later, magically transformed into a beautiful girl during a storm, 
The snake goddess changes a rainbow fish into her handmaid, Zhao Xin, Zhao Xin, sets up house in town, and seeks Zhu Zhan out again. Both grown up, the two fall in love. Local wizard Fai Hai, convicted Bainyang is a vampire out to harm Zhu Zhan, tries to break up their romance, and banishes Zhu to hard labor in a distant city, reasoning that it's the only way to save him. I have a yeah, they, I literally just skimmed to the bottom, and they do seem to spoil the whole thing. So I'm going to stop reading the synopsis now. Not, I mean, out loud. I'll read the synopsis right now, but, like, not out loud, because it's spoilers. Mm -hmm. um. Oh, actually, I was about to remind you. Thanks, Hugs. I really appreciate that. Often regarded as the first modern anime, this variant on Little Mermaid marked the maturation of several young tr ye several years of training at Toei to produce the critical mass of animators required to make a feature, as well as the final ebb of the flood of Disney cartoons that had dominated the Japanese domestic market since 1952. It was originally adapted from Chinese mythology as a story by Shin Urehara, under the auspicious uh, auspices of producers who deliberately sought a non-Japanese theme in an attempt to find exhibitors in mainland Asia. As the first color feature of the Toei Animation Studio, it casts a long shadow on the history of Japanese animation, and is one of the twin Big Bangs of the modern business, rivaled only by Osama Tezuka's later Astro, Astro Boy. Featuring uncharacteristically oriental character designs and serious trials and hardships for the young lovers and their animal friends, it inspired many others to become animators, including the young Hayao Miyazaki, on whom it made a deep impression. It won honors at the Venice Children's Film Festival in 1959, but reaction to its US release in 1961 was disappointing. Mimi, a small red panda, is mistakenly referred to as a cat in some sources. And I have to read the first edition. They did add some stuff. Yep. Mm hmm. They did add some stuff. They added this part about marked the maturation of several years of training at Toei to produce a criti the critical mass of animators required to make a feature, as well as the final ebb of the flood of Disney cartoons that had dominated the Japanese domestic market since 52. And then. Yeah. Uh, that, that chunk there. Okay. also added a little bit more about the author here 
Um, under the auspicious of produ auspices of producers who deliberately saw a non-Japanese theme in an attempt to find exhibitors in mainland Asia. As the first color feature of the Toei Animation Studio casts a long shadow in the history of Japan Japanese animation, and is one of the two twin big bangs of the modern business rivaled by Astro Boy. Yeah. Okay. So added uh, origin from producers wanting non Japanese theme added first color feature of Toei long shadow big bang one of twin big bangs other being Astro Boy. Nothing else. That's pretty much all they added. I'd say that's a good article, actually. I think that's a good handling. I'm also interested in it. I had heard of it before. I think they gave an opinion though. They just say it's a variant on Little Mermaid. Which is tech kind of I've I've kind of called that dismissive, but it's fine. They're not really being dismissive about it. But they don't say any, any projections of quality. They just say they just say it casts a long shadow in the history of Japanese animation. inspired many others. They just kind of allude to its quality, I guess, but they don't really give their own opinion about it. I'm back a bit until my phone dies, but Dan, did they make a cringe comparison? A little. They just lumped, like, Persona 4 with Sailor Moon and Vision of Escaflone in the way that it, um, all three of them have an alternate reality where you're important. Okay. Although I was lagging behind, so it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay. Panda, go panda. Even though it's panda co panda, even they say it's panda co panda, but they label it as panda go panda. All right. Whatever. Oh my god. I remember reading this article already, and it's just so annoying. Miyazaki's first original work as a screenwriter is a charming tale of a little girl who befriends a panda and his cub. You know, I wonder who directed that movie. Hmm. 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 Ah. Interesting. Hmm. 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 These are comparisons would never be made if they were human. <laughs> Pre-Astro Boy anime are strange in hindsight. They feel more like Disney movies rather than what most associate with anime, including the experimental stuff. A joke, by the way, I'm not actually being mean. No, I, I, I hear you. No, I hear what you mean. Um... Left alone, home alone with her grandmother, has to go away for a few days. Little Mimiko is surprised to find a panda and his cub moving in. They very soon form a little family of their own, with Father Panda offering the fatherless Mimiko the paternal affection she always wanted. 
and Mimiko mothering the motherless cub. Everything's going well until the local policeman discovers exactly who Mimiko's house guests are. The father bear, a model of good parenthood foreshadowing Miyazaki's ongoing concern with the parent-child relationship, can also be seen as one of the stages in the creation of My Neighbor Totoro, and the young protagonist has much in common with the heroine Miyazaki had sketched for TMS's abortive Phoebe Longstocking project. There are also f substantial foreshadowings of Miyazaki's masterful grasp of a child's eye view of the world, such as which would come to fruition in his later works as Spirited Away in Ponyo. Notably, street signs in the show make it clear that it's set in Kita Akitsu near Tokorozawa, in other words, Miyazaki's birthplace and the same area of countryside where a later movie would locate his Totoro spirits. In light of much later media coverage of the Miyazaki family, it is tempting to read extra levels of meaning into Mimiko's decision that all fathers have to work, but not hers, because every day is his day off. Miyazaki's son Goro, the for future director of Tales of Mercy and From Up on Poppy Hill, would have been five years old when this was in production. The sequel, Panda Go Panda, Rainy Day Circus, also directed by Takahata. Also directed by Takahata. Thanks. You know, I, I, he's here too, guys. Followed a year later and is bundled with the first part of Modern D on Modern DVDs in, an approach, in order to approach feature length. Pandas were big box. Like, I don't know if I'm being overblown with Takahata's involvement as being director here, where we, we, we kind of genuinely accept that Birth is Kanada's magna opus, despite not being the director. And we have that confirmation from the director, Sadamichu Shinya, who's saying that I just did everything that Kanada told me to do. And then it was kind of up to me to figure out some loose ends and stuff like that. But like, so maybe that's the case in Panda Ko Panda, where Takahata would say like, it was kind of Miyazaki's thing, but he didn't want to direct at the time for this and that reason, but he wrote it and it's his, it's his thing. Maybe, maybe that's the case. I would, but they don't address it like that. They just kind of take it as a matter of fact that this is just Miyazaki's thing. Takahata who? You mean Miyazaki, right? Every anime director is just Miyazaki. <laughs> How are they doing that all the time? That's the thing. To me, it feels like a pattern. I can under maybe see their argument with this that, like, yeah, it actually, like, especially the way that they're elaborating it here about Miyazaki's fatherhood and uh, his hometown and da 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 da. You know, with how much relevance it has to Miyazaki, that it is his thing. Despite all these arguments being propped, I, I don't know why they don't. It it's just weird that like you know they make such a bit emphasis on Miyazaki. And then when you get to Takahata's movies, he does not have the same level of attention and respect. It's just a pattern. As, as the resident starting point expert, I want to say Miyazaki lost a bit of energy after the proposal he had for Panda Go Panda being Pippi Longstock. Yeah, they mentioned that. They mentioned um, the young protagonist has much in common with the heroine Miyazaki had sketched for TMS's abortive Pippi Longstocking project. They do mention it. But then I really liked what Bob mentioned in his Panda Co Panda video that came out this past month, where he mentioned that Takahata is also coming off of failure from directing Horus and it not being commercially successful. So he got kind of like demoted almost. So both of them are coming off of this like period of like, this is their, this is their work that they make after, you know, kind of getting their shit hand, shit handed to them and it's before their really blowout success with Heidi which I don't know if they're gonna men I haven't read I haven't finished the article yet but I this is such a precursor to Heidi specifically I think which is Takahata's thing isn't it followed a year later and is bundled with the first part on modern DVDs in order to approach feature length Pandas were a big box office. Pandas were big box office in the 1970s after the arrival of a Chinese panda at Tokyo Zoo, and other unrelated appearances during the period included Yugo Serikawa's Pandas Great Adventure and the Sino-Japanese co-production Tao Tao the Panda. The following decade would see a similar obsession with koalas, sea noozles. So no, no, they do not make the connection to Heidi. Okay. Okay. 
Well, let's compare the first edition. Let's see what they've if they've added anything. Oh, so I have to make sure I write down that they had a positive opinion about it. I think they added something, yeah. I can tell with the length. Yep, they did. Just gonna double check. Yeah, they added more Miyazaki praise. I was gonna say something else, but um, I will. I will not. Yeah. So the, the they in fact added more praise to Miyazaki. definitely right it's weird how the articles shy away from saying Takahata's name there's no reason to when it's his sole directorial projects and also for anything he collaborated with because that's something we can't even know how integral he was due to his his and Miyazaki's working relationship being so varied yeah I don't know he's he's an important and big name and I don't know why you wouldn't bring up both like I think it's cool that it's directed by Takahata but written by Miyazaki I'm not saying don't mention Miyazaki, he's not important. Of course not. Of course not. But like, it's discouraging. Especially just because like, this is this sort of emphasis on Miyazaki, 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 to the exclusion of Takahata, led to this discre this dispar dis discrepancy, disparagey, no, I don't know the word for it this gap distance in notoriety between Miyazaki and Takahata when they should really be equals they were equals Miyazaki may have been more prolific he may have been the one that won the Oscar and not Takahata I mean Takahata was at least nominated for his last film thankfully but What can I say? What can I say? Right. Panda Z, the Robomation Robonimation from two thousand four.
what's going on? Ironic timing for me to come in. Oh, never mind. I missed it. Now you were. You can go back and um. You can back. You can uh, rewind the stream. I'm sure, Bob, to talk to, or see what they say about Panda. But the 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 TLDR for Panda is the sheer. I don't even think I even. Yeah, I did. I can mostly allude to it, really. But there's the sheer emphasis on Miyazaki's end of that project, and then a barely a mention of Takahata. Barely. Even though the guy directed it. Nothing too crazy outside of the Takahata ratio. But lost against Big Hero 6. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, it was really bad. Where am I going? Yeah, fantasy, whatever. Um, Panzer Dragoon's the next uh, first edition. That's okay. Pandora Hearts. I'm familiar with this one, but I'm not going to read it. Unless you're thinking interesting. I don't quite know if it's the same thing, so I, I'll get into it I, I, to read more, but um, let me just read you the premise here and then what they say about it. Oz Veselis is the son of a noble house. Apart from the absence of his father, his life is comfortable and carefree. Cast into prison when he comes of age, he is saved by a mysterious being who looks like a girl but is really a, trans a human transformed into a creature that consumes other humans' spirits. Threatened by toys that are symbols of horror rather than happiness, Oz must unravel the secrets of events a century in the past and find the truth behind the weird organization known as Pandora. All And then it goes on to say, all predicated on the same basic pre premise as a little princess. The same basic premise the story of a brave young innocent who has to grow up quickly and in cruel circumstances when the world falls apart around him, but is saved and enabled to thrive through the power of courage and friendship. That is such a boilerplate appreciation of both stories. Little princess, she's trapped in the fucking room. She's trapped in that, that area. She can't go anywhere. She's at this boarding... I might be mistake, might be misremembering the Little Princess plot, but, like, she's dropped off at this at this private school that she can afford and whatever, and it's all, like, rich people. And then her father seems to have died, so then they put her in the attic as, like, a peasant, like, as, as a servant... And she has to kind of overcome that adversity of the loss of her parents and, and stat and not even just the, yeah, status, but like, and just the emotional turmoil of that. And yeah, like saved and enabled to thrive through the power of courage and friendship. But like Oz must unravel the secrets of events a century in the past and find the truth behind the weird organization known as Pandora. That is a completely different thing. Completely different story. Like, I wouldn't be like, hey, did you like Pandora Hearts? Watch A Little Princess. Or, did you like A Little Princess? I bet you'd really like Pandora Hearts. How and why? What? The Oscars don't care about animation. They just see it as juvenile and generally pick whatever's popular. Pandora Hearts is a good time, more so the manga than the anime. Same premise, really? <laughs> I can't, I, I can't. I can't. Oh, thank God. I 
I don't think so. <laughs> the anime's problem is that it loses the purity of that simple outline under a dressing up box of constantly changing frills and furbelows with shadowy gothic gaslight alternating with perky flashy brightness and both fighting for screen time with super deformed shenanigans comic relief and absurd anime tropes vying for gritty brutal vying with gritty brutality and overwrought emotion ugh Zepic's animation doesn't help, sometimes looking old-fashioned and rather cheap. The plot is similarly chaotic. One feels for writers with an epic manga universe to cram into 25 episodes. Greg, you've seen the anime and the manga, right? I don't know how close you are with the, um, with the adaptation process of that show, but, like, it wasn't a case where they're trying to cram the whole manga the an epic manga universe crammed into 25 episodes i don't feel like that's what happened i, I remember wa watching pandora hearts and i didn't feel that was the case it didn't feel like it was like too fast or so something or ended quickly if anything it had to read the manga end ending the same author as vanitas oh i feel like i knew that but i did uh, okay both yuki had your osts they're complaining about the, that the plot gets layered and complicated. I think it's a little more than that. <laughs> to enjoy the style without the confusion, you might want to stick to the nine, nine three-minute Pandora Heart specials. Huh? Why? Why would anyone want to... Why? What? Huh? I've never... I've never seen them or anyone do that. You may as well stick to the specials? DVD shorts? The DVD shorts. What? The enemy does look older than the time it came out. Yeah, yeah, it does. The, the ending two episodes are original or so. The ending is unresolved and abrupt, though. And then Greg's just like... <laughs> <laughs> huh? Y yeah. What on earth? Okay, so needless to say... Weren't a fan. Weren't a fan. It's such a word salad, dude. Like this, I have to read this again. This is ridiculous. With shadowy gothic gaslight, gaslight alternating with perky, flashy brightness, and both fighting and both fighting for screen time with super deformed shenanigans, comic relief, and absurd anime tropes vying with gritty brutality and overwrought emotion. Ugh. Oh. Same energy as watch the summary movie instead. Even worse, because they're not. I don't even think this. I don't. Is, is it even available? The fucking these specials, like you have to hunt for them sometimes. It's like saying, uh, "Go watch the picture dramas for Code Geass." It's like, why? What? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, it's all fucking. Well, hold on. <laughs> um.
<laughs> this fucking curveball. Jeez Louise. To enjoy the style without the confusion, you might want to stick to the nine episode. The nine three minute Pandora Hearts specials released as DVD extras. Pandora Hearts, from what I hear, is a great show. Still haven't seen it myself. I enjoyed it. I th well, I don't know. If, I don't remember if I. It's a blur for me. It was a. It was a long. It was something I'd wanted to watch for a long time, and then I finally got to it. I did give it a good. I did ultimately enjoy it, but it's a very unfinished thing. Like the manga is actually finished and sort of a complete idea, and that's what a lot of people end up getting a lot of emotional attachment and enjoyment out of. Um, the anime is one of those. Um, promotional obviously most anime is promotional but this one is definitely more so of a uh, advertisement I guess or T you know uh, ease in for people who prefer anime and then they get hooked enough to read the manga seems that way okay Penny Pony Dash from 2005 wow okay <laughs> gotcha uh, <laughs> I actually read the manga and then watch the anime. Still had fun with it, but the manga is definitely better. For those of you who are just listening, I have to. I'm sorry. I, I have to keep. Uh, I I have to keep in mind that some of you were just listening, so I want to. Um, I want to accommodate. They said about Pony Panty Pony Dash, a dismissive opinion. Pretty girls and a rabbit with occasional swimsuits. Suspiciously similar to Doki Doki School Hours, but why not just keep ringing that idea until it's totally dry? That's it. They just su su summarize it a little bit, and then it's literally two sentences. Three. It's three sentences. Ugh. And look, I'm not like a Penny Pony Dash stan, but I have heard of it. I have seen plenty of shots from it. It seems like fun. It's notable because it's a Shaft show, um, and obviously directed by Akiyuki Shimbo is kind of a... Made, not really. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know exactly how credible that is, if how did he actually direct it type of deal when it comes to Shaft. But that's why people know about it. Whereas I have not heard of Doki Doki School Hours. Sensei no Oji Khan. This is one that they liked actually. I remember them, I remember reading about this one and they liked it. But they're just comparing it to one that they like and be like, what is this thing? I might actually read the manga and then watch the anime. Still had fun, but the manga is definitely better. I think both Vanitas and Pandora balance darker and comedic elements very well. Okay, yeah. I don't know if any, about Vanitas at being a, um, how close is that to being a complete adaptation? Probably not, right? <laughs> Probably not. Well, I got another another well-known one for you guys. Panty and stocking with garter belt. From 2008. Wait a minute. No, it... Wait a minute. 
I don't know every anime ever, but... Yeah, I'm right. It's 2010. It's not 2008. Okashi. Nitpick, but, you know. Anyway. I usually... I, I remember... I wasn't gonna, like, acutely pick some of that apart, but whatever. A group of ghosts made up of the regrets of the dead has moved into da Daten City. Two angels arrive from heaven, allegedly on a mission to exterminate the evil influences. But in reality, the pair of Avengers are slackers who were kicked out for bad language and worse behavior along with their sidekick, Garter Belt. If they can collect enough heaven coins, the girls might just get their halos back, but earning that kind of bread in this kind of town is going to take some seriously unangelic behavior. You have to hand it to Gynax. Are they gonna mention my boy? Are they gonna mention my boy at all? This wasn't 2008 because the director was making the Gurren Lagann movies at the time. The Vanitas anime basically adapted all the manga so far. I think the manga went on hiatus. Oh, cool. You have to hand it to Gynax. The makers of the sublime Wings of Honimies, the adorable Secret of Blue Water, and the epic of Negativity Evangelion know two things better than almost anyone else in the business. They didn't even mention Gurren Lagon. They didn't even me They list Wings of Ponymies, Nadia, and Ava referring to Panty and Stocking and not any of their more modern works that better reflect Panty and Stocking like Gurren Lagann even Die Buster would have been fine maybe Fooly Cooly even though that's a co-production are you fucking kidding me and I'll it, RC Phillips, where's my boy I, it's a long article we'll see if they mention him oh my god Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> know two things better than almost anyone in the else in the business. How to put their whole heart and soul into their work. And how to do potty humor. Whatever they do, they do to excess. They, they, they? You're, you're just personifying a fucking studio? The thing that all of us are like, hey, you know, studios aren't individuals. They're they're made up of people. Are you really mythicizing this studio? Like, look, I myth I'm certainly talking about Gynax as a studio in my Gurren Lagann video. But I would hope that I'm a little transparent about how it's made up of people that left and then was brought by new people and that they wanted to do different things and there's a a little more complexity to it than a they're not really a monolith I think the same staff would be involved though it's surprising yeah Vantas guy and they got through all those chapters and felt so natural not rushed wow adorable secret of blue water I don't know who thinks of a show like that so they list nothing that the actual director did early Gynex is lightning in a bottle the article is hitting all my nerve endings <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they do, they do to excess, and excess is the core of panting and stalking. One could allege this story has a feminist subtext, since the protagonists do exactly what they want all the time and leave others, often men, to clean up after them, to which we counter that a feminist subtext, which chimes so exactly with the patriarchal dream of the bad girl, is very probably a tart in vicar Vicar's clothing. A tart in Vicar's clothing? I wonder who wrote this, British people? <laughs> you, you're showing a little bit. Hey, care. <laughs> Man. Very probably a tart in Vickers clothing. I've never, ever heard that term. And look, I get it, I'm not British. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? I'm sorry. I, I have to look that up. Hold on. Tart in Vickers clothing. What is a Tart and Vickers party, you ask? Basically, it's a costume party with a theme. Either comes at, come as your sexy alter ego, or your most holy chast alter ego, or mix it up and combine the two. That was the first thing that, um, that's from Weedicon. First thing that Google shows me. Okay, got a bunny girl there. Okay, it's a, uh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, Tart and Vickers clothing, so it's like a sexy nun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. As long as you ignore ca chocolate panic. Reading too much into the too much into it, the article. Maybe Peggy Star Gardenbell is just a silly show and the director wanted to do. I don't really get where they get that reading from they're just sex crazed angels. You may have to leave aside the script because the US dub is even less sophisticated than the Japanese. And either you snigger at, you snigger every time someone says bra and poop and whore, or you don't. But the most puritanical critic can't deny the dazzling visual invention or the saturation in the sticky fluids of pop culture that informs almost every frame. It looks as crude and cheap as it sounds, but it's as compulsive as a car crash and as clever as a perfectly timed pratfall into a pool of vomit. The title of the 2011 spin-off video, Panning and Starring Gar Sanitary Box, is on the same level of sophistication as the rest of the writing. Remember, as the great Dolly Parton once remarked, it costs a fortune to look and sound this cheap. Seven writers and, and 18 animation directors for 13 episodes, double and triple teaming to get every crap joke just right. They fucking missed it! Oh my god! Not one... Not one mention of Hiroyuki Imaishi. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> no, dude. That's a, that's show stopping. That's show stopping. I I can't believe they ended it on that. As the great Dolly Parton once remarked, it costs a fortune to look and sound this cheap. Seven writers and 18 animation directors for 13 episodes. Double and triple teaming to get every crap joke just right. Pretty sure the director told them to add more crude humor to the dub. Hmm. What can I say? Gotta hand it to Guy next. <laughs> oh boy! Oh my god! Do I sound? Am I sounding holier than thou? I feel like I might be, but at the same time, I can I feel like I can guarantee you that the majority of people who know about panning and stalking and even just who directed it, reading this article would be, and it's not a snob thing, but it's, how do you fucking mess that up? Episodes have A and B sides, so they might not really be double timing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and what the fuck's wrong with that? I get that the fucking, the Sakura Boru has this whole thing about like, uh-oh, 12 animation directors on one episode. Uh-oh. Right? Like, okay. Sure. I see... I understand why it's a problem. But it's just like... To me, at the end of the day, what does it look like? What's the result? And, I, and if you want an explanation of why it looks that good, then you look to the credits. You know? so odd because Gurren Lagann was pretty huge at that time. Was Imaishi's name as big as the show? I would think surely and not just as it not just that it's a typically great Gainax show. I mean you'd be surprised. 
But what's weird, what's very strange, exponentially strange here, Panty and Stocking came out after the second edition. So this third edition is the first time that it shows up. You know what other show that they were writing about? Kill a Kill. If Imaishi wasn't a household name before Gurren Lagann, then he probably should be after Kill a Kill. Where it's like, oh, oh, it's th this guy. It's this guy. It's not Gynax. The fact that they list, the fact that they list Honimie's Nadia and Ava. Unbelievable. No, it's a pet peeve of mine when people treat studios as entities rather than credit the people who make the shows. Not mentioning individuals by name is par for the course for the time, but the book was released, wasn't it? For the time the book was released, wasn't it? People still do it now, and viewers will still eat it up, so we haven't evolved that far as a community. I agree with you, Bob, except they explicitly put in this book that they wanted to avoid that. They want people to know people, the, the artists who made the, the anime they like. And that's the thing I admired about the book. For 2001, to get away from this, like, studio might- They have- Some anime fans of the 2000s, they didn't even know the studio who made it. Except, like, Ghibli, maybe. Maybe. But, like, they wanted people to know about the individuals. And I liked that about it. And to completely drop the ball on that, for such a- For, for such a person as Imaishi. I just want to find the particular, if there's a quote about that. Yeah. Our aim in this book is to show the diversity of anime production in its cultural context and to indicate some of the main creative, the main trends and creative influences. If that doesn't mean people, I don't know what is. Especially because they're listing, they're they're making individual articles for these people. Does Imaishi have his own article? I actually haven't looked and see. I don't remember. I would have read it by now. It's Hiroyuki Imaishi. Uh, no. No, he does not have his own article in this book. Well. Isn't that interesting? He's not even... I think he had plenty of work that was so unmistakably him that he definitely should have had one by now. It wasn't a like, oh, it's no, he only got prevalence from like, Promare. No! No! By the time this book came out, you had Dead Leaves, Gurren Logon, Panty and Stocking, and Kill a Kill. That's most of his work. You also have um, his short, uh, fucking whatever. Love, speed, death, and something. <laughs> oh, well, they, they goofed then. <laughs> I think they goofed, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm reeling. Well, at least they liked it. <laughs> Every time, every time. I'm sorry if I clapped and that was a loud noise. I apologize. Unbelievable, dude. <laughs> wow. This is more of a mixed review, actually. The more I'm looking at it, I think this is more mixed. Actually. 
Like, <laughs> I don't know if they were all that positive about it, to be honest with you. Can't deny visual, you know, fucking... Yeah, I don't know if they really, they were a little more negative than I think, but they were ultimately because they're more ad admiring it, I guess. Sex and with Moxby. Thank you, Kinoko. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, I'm back for a little bit. Good to have you back, Weird Prog. You just missed like a whirlwind of a couple articles here. Just a couple. The Panty and Starting one, this Panty and Stocking article has been a fucking trip. They, well, the main, the main reason of being, uh, they don't mention Imaishi a single time. They credit Studio Gainax, but not the main creative force behind it. And then when they mention Gainax, they don't bring up the ones that would be more relevant to Panty and Stocking, like Fooly Cooly or Die Buster, even like, I don't know, like Maho Romatic maybe? Gurren Logon, most notably? Oh my god. something else oh my god Goodness, what a whirlwind. And we're still not done with the, the third edition stuff. From 2004, Panty Flash Teacher. God damn it.
because this is porn and porn characters by definition don't behave sensibly yeah The historically minded might like to consider the co coincidence of names being between the subject of this show and the infamous lead of shaming Miss Machiko. Coincidence? I'm not even gonna bother. I'm not even bothering. Fans of Dragoon, 1996. Oh my god. Ugh. I don't know, dis dismissive, I guess. Yeah, it's like. If a board director and crew copied a, fr a few pages from beginner's book of fantasy gaming, then lost the important bits like plot and characterization, this is what might emerge. Ugh. Had truly epic potential, people have spun trilogies out of less, but the paltry running time isn't up to it. They have this so- this complaint comes up so, so often about the fucking runtime. The paltry running time isn't up to the epic potential. What little space there is for dialogue that doesn't advance the plot, writer Kuroda fills with poetic meditations on sight and seeing. A throw, so this is what the sky feels like, proclaims Kyle during his first dragon flight. A throwaway line that belongs in a much better story. The dub is far better than the Spartan original deserves. God, that's so mean. That is so mean. I'm just gonna put it in negative at this point. They clearly have a fucking bone to pick with this thing. Dub is far better than the Spartan original deserves. I've probably mentioned it elsewhere, but I feel like every anime deserves the best possible dub. No excuses. Don't make it at all if you're just gonna fucking phone it in. Any situation where like, this dub's too good for this show. Fuck you! This remains a heroic rescue attempt by both Japanese and US crews fighting impossible odds of budget and, qu and lack of parentheses inspiration oh I know fans of the games hate this anime
wait, there's a Panzer Dragoon anime? Hmm, maybe I should check it out. I mean, definitely check it out, but I have realistic expectations. It's 30 minutes! Yeah, of course! I wouldn't have had any expectations about it. Side note, the Panzer Dragoon games are amazing, especially the RPG. Again, unless an anime is morally bankrupt, it doesn't deserve a bad dub. Yeah. Yeah. That was so- that was so mean of them. That was so mean. I just need to fucking put that again, just like... Uh, let me just double check the first edition. No change. Okay. Panzer World Gallant. Seems familiar to me. Okay, it's not quite what I was thinking. The Ro Ro Ryosuke Takahashi work. The introduction of more realistic elements into future fantasy didn't preclude designs of Baroque splendor. The Galliant robots are among the best, a ma magnificent fusion of futuristic technology, steampunk weightiness, and off-the-wall neoclassical design. Robot centaurs. You gotta love them. Positive. They like the robots in that one. That's refreshing. now interested in Panzer World Galleon. That was good. That's good. I mean, if someone licensed Wounded Man, I would hope they give it a gag dub. I see. Papa Love. Let me just double check the, the, um, the first edition. change. Back to third edition only. Uh, Papa Love from 19, from 2012. The lack of self-awareness is insane. Back to work. Good stream. Thank you, Bob. The lack of self-awareness is unbelievable here. Neither, this is all they say about Papa, well, not all they say, I should say, but like the first thing they say about Papa Love is neither, I'm expecting a plot synopsis, I'm expecting to know what it's about. And then all they say is, neither of the plot synopses available for this porn release make much sense. 
since both replicate the rushed, breathless jumble of sensations and exclamations to be found in the overlong and rather charmingly ungrammatical enthusiasm of the subtitle. That is such word salad! It, it's just so indulgent writing. Like, get to, what are you talking about? And the thing is, they're talking about the same thing. They're literally talking about how the subtitle is so is a breathless jumble of sensations and exclamations to be found in the overlong and rather charmingly ungrammatical enthusiasm of the subtitle. Not that there's this ungrammatical or something, but it's just so, like, wor wordy. I feel like I've called it masturbatory in the past. I think I have, yeah. We can but guess that not quite incest Lolita temptations are on offer in yet another addition to the pile of anime erotic and pornography. Since words for wild slash delusional and boobs are repeated twice, we can only assume that everybody ends up with double, double vision based on a computer game. I didn't learn a damn thing about that shit. This is literally a failing grade. Do they, did, watch it then. You seem to have watched plenty of other porn. Why did they just, why did they just give up? Don't list it then. Don't list this fucking anime if you're not gonna bother to give me a synopsis or anything. They're literally just clowning on the, the subtitle, which is like, apparently it's the whole, the whole thing. Apparently, uh, so the, the title is Papa Love, Busty and Pretty Assed Girl, Sai Mei Chan's cro Close Relative, Super Wild Wild Boobs. Like, that, that is kind of a funny subtitle. Sure, it's long and everything. But, like, you don't even bother. I didn't learn anything about this fucking thing. I don't know what... Not that I care. Not that I would want to. I would rather you just don't even put this this stuff in the first place or so much of it. Yeah, unless it's like really historically important or something. But like why what are we doing here? Such a waste of time. We can but guess that not quite incest Lolita temptations are on offer. We can but guess? You're gonna make a guess and be transparent about that? In yet another addition to the pilot, like you're just being just and it'd be just dismissive. And look, I, I would be very equally dismissive about this thing. I don't give a shit. It sounds like I give a shit, but I don't. <laughs> I just care more of that. Like I have to read it in this encyclopedia. This is an article at all. You clearly don't want to watch it or find it or make sense of it, make even heads or tails of it. What are we doing here? That's your. This is. This is what you're trying to do. And you're explicitly not doing it for like a joke? Since words for wild slash delusional and boobs are repeated twice, we can only assume that everybody ends up with double vision. Assuming, guessing. You don't make these sorts of terms in your other articles when, I, when very clearly you seem to, when you have no idea what you're talking about. Sometimes you do, don't get me wrong. When they know what they're talking about, they're damn good at what they do. This was not their finest, this is not their finest hour. This might be rock bottom actually. I would say this might be, this right. This article right here might be actually their rock bottom for me. I've said this before, but why do they keep wasting pages on hentai? Exactly, I don't know what's going on. This is, this is the worst shit. Oh, man. Man. What are they doing? Okay. All right. Well, let me just put this down here. <laughs> so I feel like it's taking a lot of my screen. It, ha it has been for a long time, so whatever. That was off. I don't even know where to put that.
this is rock bottom. Wow, really? I'm assuming this book is done by a team of people and this person is just lazy. So, um, weird proc. It is primarily two people. It is, it is co-written by John Clements and Helen McCarthy. And there are guest articles. They do credit some people in the front of the book, but they don't credit individual articles. But like every article in here has is their seal of is it's their their call, ultimately. They can ask other people for other for assistance, and some people have written articles for them. Specifically, Fred Patton with Giant Gorg, specifically wrote that article because he's like, "This is trash. You need I'll do better for you." Um, I have a good feeling that Angel's Egg was like that as well because that that article was completely rewritten from the first edition to now. Um. But at the end of the day, they have the final call on all of this. And they are even kind of owning it as we, because they're saying we can but guess that not quite insist Lolita temptations are on offer. We can only assume that everybody ends up with double vision based on a computer game. There is more detail on Boku no Pico than Dazaki's works. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, since they don't want to give a recommendation, I guess we will check out Lover in Law. This popped in. What's the current entry like? Hayden, this is rock bottom. I'm not. You literally came in on like probably their worst article, only for the fact that they just didn't do their job. They just didn't do what they were set out to do here, like describing the anime. I don't know what this is about. I have an I they literally just clown on the fucking title for, for their whole article. Neither of the pl this is how the this is the entire let me just show you the fucking whole article and you can read for yourself. But like hold on, fucking That's the entire article. You can you can read that yourself. But like they don't describe the show. All you get is that it's based on a computer game. That's the only bit of information we can glean. Other than that, you get just as much from reading the title yourself. The subtitle yourself. Like, and the word salad of this indulgent writing of since both replicate the rushed, breathless jumble of sensations and exclamations to be found in the overlong and rather charmingly ungrammatical enthusiasm of the subtitle. It's so bad. Okay, reminds me of the Leonard Maltzen guide to movie books. Even if they weren't the end writer, they still wind up responsible as the curators. No, exactly. Just them wasting time with hentai. Well, they probably didn't watch it. That's what it sounds... Yeah, no! And that's fine. I'm not saying they have to watch everything. But if they clearly can't... They said neither of the plot sy synopses available. So they had two options. They had two options for this porn release make much sense. That is saying a lot for how much they've, they've, they've been doing for everything else. Since both replicate the rushed, breathless jumble of the... Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they can't glean what it's about. Then you watch it. Then you go find it. Or better yet, don't put it in the book! Oh, well, sorry, I can't figure this out. I can't find it. Fuck it, it's porn! Get it out! Why is it in here? You're just taking this opportunity to clown on the subtitle. It's so uninformative. It's the opposite of it's just it bothersome. I had no I didn't know this thing fucking existed. I didn't know this fucking porn existed until now. And now you're making me curious. And not in a good way. Uh Fuck. What are you doing? In this case, I don't blame them. It is lolly stuff after all. Yeah, of course. Then don't. I get it. Don't put it in there. Then fuck it. You have to. You can talk about Lolita because it's like important because it's the first. It's like the first one of the first hentai. You can talk about some more high profile stuff like Boku no Pico, but like, God, it's from 2012 too. It's a very recent title. Like, who gives a fuck? 
lacking self-awareness. Exactly! What do half these words even mean? <laughs> I'm sure if you read it slowly, you can get the gist, but it's so indulgent and masturbatory of their writing. They, they know big words. Congrats. Pretension. I think I have actually seen Papa Love before. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's quite the uh, uh, the realization, Hayden. Perhaps you can enlighten. I actually don't want to know. That's the thing. I don't even want to know. I don't want to click. There's been other instances in this encyclopedia, obviously, where it's like there's something off about their the article or something that gets me to look deeper and to find out for myself. And look, I like that. I don't mind that. But like, I don't want to for this one. I just don't. I'm not. I'm not interested. But it bothers me that they didn't do the bare minimum of describing the show. Did you have a beer after it? Yeah. Not, yeah. Not a helpful synopsis at all, except mentioning that it's based on a computer game. That's the only thing. And you don't, the thing is that it's based on a computer game. You don't know who, you don't know when, you don't know anything. You know the origin for it. Great. One little bit, one piece of the, you don't really know the origin. Not like I want to, again, I'm like fuck. I don't drink beer, but I remember it being all right. Yeah? Okay. I don't drink much either. I also don't drink. Uh, sobriety. Is that the word for it? Sobriety? Sobriety for the win. I don't, I don't know. Uh, indulgently cyclopapillion, which is also ironic which, what, what it's accusing the show of. Dul indulgently sequidpillion. Ah. Big words you got there, Lisa. It's, it's by Poro. And all their stuff kind of looks the same. But if you like that aesthetic, it's not a bad thing. That's why, that's all I'll say about it. Okay. See, that's interesting. If by Poro, all their stuff kind of looks the same. That categorization is what they were doing a lot of with the part of the vanilla series and part of the this other thing. And they were categorizing a lot of hentai and stuff. And I think that at least gives you a compartmentalization and a, and a more understanding of it. So I, I find that to be helpful, but it's it's inter it's therefore interesting they didn't go that mile. I get why they didn't. I get the contempt for this title, and they're just kind of clowning on it. But like, I'm kind of, I, am I? Is this an entertainment book or informative? Is th is this like a a fucking college library source, or is this just jokes? Right, like the. You gotta pick one. I don't feel you can kind of do both. I don't mean I don't mean to say that like encyclopedias need to be bereft of humor. I don't know if bereft is the word for it. Sorry, I'm a dum dum. But like, it's just bothersome. Yeah, Library of Congress includes bibliographical references and index. It's like used as a source for people, you know. Don't get me wrong, it certainly functions that way. But the fact that it has this sort of thing, I'm so sorry that I'm spending so much time on this article, but I'm so blown away at just the incompetency. I just don't, it's not funny. And it's not like, is anyone else like, I don't know, I find it kind of funny. Like, please, if you wanna, I'm not gonna alienate you if you feel that way, but like, it feels like everyone else, at least in the small chat that I have, seems kind of weirded out by it too. I mean, at least Overfiend has some famous names attached to it. Honestly, I'd rather watch the first two Overfiends over again over any lolly anime. And I don't like Overfiend. Yeah, it's probably a mixture of both. I wish Poro did more beyond their default style or really most porn animator studios. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea. I wouldn't know. I would just wouldn't know. I'm moving on. Uh, finally. Good lord. We're not making it to, uh, the set goal, I don't think. It's already three hours in. Bye-bye. But I guess that makes sense, because, um, I did the, uh, uh, categorization for an hour. So maybe I'll, I'll parse it down to a certain point. I don't know. 
I probably should. Because I've only done, like, what? Ten articles? <laughs> I'll, once I finish PA, how about that? How many articles have I done? <laughs> Hold on. I don't think I've done that many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty. Yeah, I've done fourteen out of fifty that I was hoping to do. I'm an idiot. Oh no! I'm definitely gonna have to read off stream. Definitely. I hate reading off stream, to be honest with you. It's, it's lonely. Anyway, we're just gonna wrap it through some of these. Let's finish. Let's finish PA. <laughs> Let's see. <sighs> okay, Papa Mama Bye Bye is from 1980. heavy-handed juxtaposition of animal hospital and international friendship. They say it's heavy-handed, but it's not a big deal. I'm moving on. There's no changes either. Papillon Rose. Okay, this is also from 2006. Not also, but like it's, also, it's the third edition. Oh boy, I love reading about anti- Good God, I hate it. I couldn't even keep the, I couldn't even keep the um, the sarcasm up for more than two seconds. I just had to completely shatter it afterwards. Ugh. I don't know if y'all want to read this one. I'm certainly not reading it out loud. Yeah, uh, negative for sure. Paprika! I will read this one. The Near Future. I feel like I may have, and uh, someone may have asked me about it at some point. The Near Future. A new psychotherapeutic technique has been developed using a cutting-edge device called the DC Mini. Through it, the therapist can enter patients' dreams and explore their unconscious. Then, one of the prototypes is stolen, raising the terrifying possibility that untrained or unscrupulous users could enter anyone's brain and personality while they sleep and wreck havoc. Atsuko Chiba, a key member of the development team, enters the dream world as her sassy alter ego Paprika to try and find out who is behind the theft and what they intend. Approaching the source novel by the girl who left the times Yasutaka Tsutsui with humanity and respect, quote humanity and respect, Cohen invests somewhat more effort in remaining faithful to the original than he did with his earlier Perfect Blue. The main addition to the novel is the movie's recurring image of an oncoming parade, growing in intensity and surreality 
as a psychological storm risks breaking through into the real world. A touch very much in keeping with Tsutsui's own work, and likely to have contributed to the author's willingness to appear in a cameo with Kone himself as a pair of barmen. But Paprika is also a classic is also classic Kone territory. There's mis a mystery to solve, with dark and terrible deeds cloaked in fantasy yet affecting the real world. There's a protagonist whose dual life is rooted in fantasy. There's a cast of flawed, fallible characters. There's the city and the communications revolution, serving and shaping our ideas. And there's an otaku, a hapless geek whose chances of getting the girl and living the, the dream look remote. The whole movie is a perfect piece of science fiction. The science and technology cannot be separated from the story. Of course. Cone tackles the idea, ideas of responsibility and individuality, of what it means to be part of a soci part of society in a nation where conformity and corporation transform in the face of increased wealth, slackening family ties, and a cultural invasion that has been gathering pay pace ever since 1945. The, gear, the fear of aging is the major underlying theme of urban culture, for men as well as women with a particular resonance in a culture that traditionally reveres old age. The youthful perky alter ego that dogged the protagonist's steps in Perfect Blue pops up again in Paprika, disguised as a useful piece of professional equipment, but really a key to the heroine's own secret dreams. 30-something professional Atsuko creates a perky, fearless teenage avatar to confront the mundan mundanity of everyday life and the tyranny of time. Paprika contains plenty of in-jokes to please film buffs and make them feel part of the director's own club. Not just the references to Roman Holiday and Tarzan of the Apes, but a wonderful blink and a bit of blink and you'll miss it Kurosawa fan service. He also pays homage to Alfred Hitchcock in the movie's structure, a classic double helix. A mystery, like Rear Window or Paranoia Agent, entwined with a clash between two worlds that seem entirely separate but turn out to be not so very different after all, like Princess Mononoke. As in, as in all his movies, Cohn reminds us that the monsters in the closet turn out to be nothing but a few old clothes. It's the monsters in our heads we have to confront. Good. Good article. Did they talk about Kite and Mezzoforte? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Good question. This anime is a, yeah, this anime is a non-aged enough, though. Billy and Rose is not porn. It's just an erotic parody of Sailor Moon. I was, I was thinking it was porn. It just really sounds like it, to be honest with you. It just, and look, the the, the thing is, right? They don't have a signifier for pornography. All they get give you is the synopsis. Sometimes they will say it's porn, but like I have to guess. And I read the, the the description, and it really sounded to me like a hentai. I mean, for those of you who want to do no idea, here's what I read. And then this afterwards. Yeah. I don't know how accurate that is, but... Was it more of just a less, just a safe for work reimagining of the premise again? The OVA is. Even the OVA I would just call Hetchy. Finally some good food. Right now I'm just imagining that pause to like meme cite it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going off what I've read, haven't seen the OVA myself. Wow, foreshadowing for that perfect blue article. Society. I need to check out Paprika. I remember seeing some footage and it looked cool. Yeah, it's a cone. I don't know what other Satoshi Kone movies you've seen. But uh... You know, I was about to say they're all bangers. I didn't really like Paprika, but I distinctly remember where I was, and I was kind of forcing myself to watch it because it was the last cone I, I, I hadn't seen, and I had some time in the office, and I just watched it. And I remember not really that paying that much attention, not being immersed, not engaging with it. 
And then I've seen Millennium Act. I've tried watching Millennium Actress like two or three times, and each time it, it loses me. And I'm just, you know, zoned out. I just don't pay attention. I don't know what it is. But, you know, I do love Perfect Blue and Tokyo Godfathers to piss. I've seen those movies multiple times and love them. And then Paranoid Agent I enjoyed. I've only seen that once. I really, I, I do really like the OST for that one particularly. I actually own it. Scooby-Doo taught me that humans are the real monsters. Yeah. <laughs> The feeling really sounds like porn if you describe it, yeah. Anime Bites is a porn symbol for H releases, that's literally all they had to do. Yeah. They have content warnings for like N for nudity, V for violence, but then they put it on they put N for nudity for paprika. That does and N and V for N V for nudity and violence on paprika. That doesn't mean it's a <laughs> that doesn't mean it's a porn. Just read that t read that TMS raised their animators base salary. Good for them. Yay! Where do you think Nolan got the idea for Inception? Hmm. I think I, they only they I think only haven't watched Millennium Actress. Yeah. I don't believe I've seen any of them. Well, you got good stuff out of you. I just say Paprika is what Inception stole from. PA is fun. I've been getting Millennium Actress at some point. Me too. I have to try it again. There's a lot of movies that I need to I'm gonna watch I've been planning to watch during the summer. Like I have kind of a series of movies, um, including the ten Shin Chan films, the first ten, and all the Yamado movies. I just yesterday, as I was watching Sally the Witch, um, I went and like really figured out what Yamado movies there are and how many of them and which one and what year are they from. Just getting my head around that. Because I have a certain video idea related to that. That's all I'll say. I mean, the OST for Power Rangers by the guy to Berserk. Yeah, of course. And Paprika. So Sumer Hirasawa. Still need to see M.A. Millennium Actress. Also need to watch the dub for Tokyo Godfathers. I think I've seen the dub for Tokyo Godfathers. I liked it. It was good. Anywho. Well, that's... Nope, that's not it for PA, actually. I'm, I'm dumb. Papua-kun. From 1992. And it's over here. So, Paper Trail. What the hell is Paper Trail from 1997? Hold on. Let's find out what this is. Isaku? Great! 183 results. Not what I need. Written... Clues? Ah, there it is. It's an I. I must have put that somewhere. Let's see. Isaku. Yeah. The aim of the original game was reportedly to escort the female cast off the premises. Though many of the players preferred to watch them succumb to the janitor's lust. Bold of you to assume that! <laughs> Isako. Slash the Isako. Yeah. P -p move changed. Right. Okay. Cool. So I have read that one. Uh, Papua Kun. They did change the name a little, wording a little bit, but it's fine. It's the same area. The Lame Match is the only main cone film I haven't seen yet. I still. I also haven't seen Memories. Really? Oh, wow. Definitely, if I don't know if... Yeah, never mind. Yeah, watch Memories. Yeah. Uh, Memories is more of an Otomo thing, even if Cone did one of the shorts. He wrote it, yeah. So he, like, he wrote Magnetic Rose, so I would give that to him. I would give that to him as one of his things. But you should watch, my, my, you should watch Memories anyway. Um, okay. Hmm. 
It's like a, it's like a world masterpiece theater thing. Like very kind of unconventional world masterpiece theater thing, but still. Parade, parade. Uh, once again, I am reading it. I'm like, I'm kind of liking the premise, and then it's a porn. At least I think it's a porn. Maybe it's not. Hold on. Nope. Pink pineapple. Two episodes. Come on. Oh, well, okay. They actually give a positive review of it. I guess the premise sounds kind of entertaining. It's like uh, they have to duel using the bodies of certain... The, the duelist who makes the other's partner orgasm first wins. I guess that's kind of cool. <laughs> I, I, that's just really funny. Just the <laughs> describing the premise and then I very dejectedly be like, I guess that's kind of cool. <laughs> Man, that's funny. I mean, also, they, they say it's good, so. Uh, entertaining. And well-executed entry in the idle sub-genre of anime porn. Save them both for a good day. I hear you. I'm going to be watching Memories at some point when I get the Blu-ray. Yay! On a compilation that looks like VHS footage. Yeah. Definitely get the Blu-ray. I worked on it. I don't know if you knew that. Hey, Shaves. Anything crazy so far? I'm going to watch the bot ad anyway. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I would say so, yes. I would say, yeah. There's some crazy stuff. Yep. Big change. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I just like um, the two notable ones I'd say is uh, Panty and Stocking was fucking wild, and uh, Papa Love was like their rock bottom. I don't ever. I feel like there was never a more useless article, or just more of a fucking awful like. Not even to say that they, they. It was just. It's just mishandled. It was just like, why is this in here? It's bad. But you know, I have to say, I did. I do. I am now interested in that. And and I. That's something. Actually, get me interested in that. So Kajo but hentai. I wouldn't say that. Uh, maybe maybe I would. I don't know. It's an idol show, so. Didn't the Zero Escape guy work on that? Hmm. Okay. Paradise Kiss! Hey! I haven't seen it yet, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Teenager Yukari thinks that she spends... Thinks that she spends her whole life trying to live up to the expectations of her pushy mother. Her life of books and constant studying is interrupted by the not entirely unwelcome attentions of a group of fashion students who think that she would make an ideal model for their clothes label, the titular Paradise Kiss. She initially refuses their offer, although they are able to blackmail her into the, her first show by threatening to reveal the identity of her secret crush, which they have discovered by reading her mislaid notebook. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Yukari begins to hang out with hang, hang out at a bar with the bad boy, the pretty boy, the mysterious girl, and the one who is supposed to be cute. Before long, however, she begins to appreciate that these people are more than just another rack of off-the-peg school, school day archetypes. There is more to life than school, and that even if these misfits are not behaving convenient, conventionally, they are nevertheless choosing their own path. 
In becoming their nur their muse, their nurse. In becoming their muse, Yukari is inspired to become her own person. Combining the fashion obsessions of cosplay complex or Moncherie Coco with the questionable associate associates of Boys Over Flowers, this series is actually a sequel of sorts to TV Asahi's neighborhood story, Gokinji Monogatari. It is similarly based on a manga by Ayazawa. The closing theme of the Japanese broadcast was Do You Want To by Franz Ferdinand, liable to secure more interest from outside anime fandom than one might normally expect, compared to Interstellar 5555. At least they mentioned Ayazawa. Unfortunately, they didn't really mention Osabu Kobayashi, who directed it. Unfortunate. I guess it's not a bad article, but again, it's just sort of like finding the, you know, it's the, it's like trying to draw lines to other things, and they, they just connect fucking cosplay complex, Monsterie Coco, that doesn't even fucking exist, and Boys Over Flowers, and Interstellar Five 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 because of the ED. Okay. Kind of shoujo hating TVH. Hmm. I, I understand. They they don't like um, Fushigi Yugi either. But at least they seem to like Paradise Kiss. Uh, actually, no. I don't think they really give their opinion about this one. That's a shame. No, no, they don't, uh, they don't give their opinion, really. Kind of underwhelmed by that one. Oh, well. What the hell is Interstellar 5555 have to do with it? The, um, connection to the closing theme is, like, Do You Want To by Franz Ferdinand, and that gives it some, like, appeal. Which it does. It, I've seen that ED being like, Whoa, it's English ED! I recognize that! I've seen that. It's Jose. Oh, Paradise Kiss? Uh, probably, right? Uh, they don't say it's shoujo. Based on a manga by Ayazawa. Yeah, they don't they don't mention it being Jose at all or or shoujo. They just mention Nate uh, Kinju Monogatari. But they're mentioned they're connected to 5555 because oh, Daft Punk, right? Some, some connection of familiarity is appealing to people. Colleen would go to town if she got to write all these shoujo articles. Yeah, probably, hopefully. Although, she doesn't really watch anime as much as manga, so... If it was manga, yes, she'd kill it. But if it was... I don't, I don't know how much anime she's seen. Not like total, not like in general. I just mean like, how often does she see the adaptations of these things? But I'm sure she'd do a good job at that, yeah. Oh yeah, fair. Depends on what magazine we're in. I want to get to Illustrate Industrial 5555 so bad. I love Daft Punk. And some lots of other stuff like 3-9 and, and Battleship Yamado. Yeah, I actually haven't seen 5555 uh, 5, 5, 5 myself. But like, what I, I remember when um, Leiji passed away a couple months ago, People who were like sharing five 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 five, um, some of my mutuals were like, you know, he didn't really involve himself that much in that project. He kind of just, it's, it's just his designs. It's not like his story or anything. So they were kind of poo pooing at people's love for that movie to be like, oh, I'll miss you, Leiji. <laughs> be like, watch three nine or Yamato or Harlock. Even even like Yamato is is a little uh, dubious with him because it was him and Nobu and and Nishizaki, and then they had a a lawsuit of who owns it more and Leiji lost. So I imagine she's not seen most shoujo anime, but mostly talks about manga because a lot of these th series don't have adaptations. Yeah, met a lot of shoujo fans who are like that. Mm-hmm. Probably, yeah. That's a good call. Okay, Paradise. Well. Without. 
Oh, stars. Starts. This is kind of an interesting concept, actually. Is this... I just need to double check something. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, a love comedy about Hiroshi, a normal teenage boy who discovers that af after his mother's death that his real father is a famous singer. Moving in with his newfound parent, Hiroshi must cope with having a stepmother who is closer in age to himself than her husband and who, until the previous week, he used to fantasize about whenever he saw her on TV. That's kind of a funny premise. It's only a 55 minute um, OVA based on a Shonen Sunday magazine, or uh, uh, Shonen Sunday manga. That's kind of funny. I'm not interested in that actually. And let me just double check the, uh... Wait. I'm stupid. I didn't even... I didn't even check the Parade Parade, uh, comparison. I think they changed a lot. Hold on. But let me get to Paradise Without Stars first. Yeah, I'm stupid. Okay. So, back to... Sorry. Back to Parade Parade really, really quick. Which is from 1996. Yeah, they change it completely. Oh my god, wait. What? God, we got a changed opinion here. Holy crap! I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't believe I'm sorry. I missed it. You have to. I, I, I thank God I looked again. Holy crap! This is a changed opinion. Dismissive. Changed. Parade. Parade. I have to look at the formatting, the way I do this, or the, the, the encyclopedia, the, the notes. Okay. So yeah, so this one... First is something else, and then third is positive. Entertaining well-executed entry in the idol singer sub of anime porn. And then this one's negative. If not dismissive, really. So this is their, this is their, uh, let me read their first edition. Still, I think Leiji's a big reason why Amado was any good. The creator later did Odin. I know. I know Nishizaki. I get it. Without 5555, might not have recognized Tetsuro's design. When I found 3.9 on a streaming service, it's so good. Oh, I'm happy you like it. And you know, Domestic Girlfriend Spice. Yeah. Um, okay, so Parade Parade, in the first edition, they say, two short stories, supposedly of an, er supposedly of an erotic nature, based on Satoshi Ak Akifuji's manga expose of the ex entertainment world. In the first, a pop star and her manager pleasure each other after her first concert. In the second, Rival stars play a dangerous game that involves av avoiding the toilet for as long as possible, with a payoff that may indeed be erotic for someone, somewhere. A similar stretching of the boundaries for good taste can be found in Professor Payne. And let me read you the third article, the third edition. Rising pop star Kaori Shine, we actually get a name this time, has just finished her the first concert of her first tour, a year after her debut. However, she has two secrets which, if revealed, would betray her squeaky clean image. Her female manager, Yoko Imai, is her lover. 
and in addition to a woman's normal se sexual attributes, she has a functioning penis. Things become even more complicated when her work schedule causes Kaori to cross paths with Saki Midorizawa. Saki is a talented veteran star whose public image is Kaori's opposite, a bad girl who wears revealing outfits and uses her appearance and sex appeal to their full measure. She also has a penchant for seducing her sororal idols and adding them to her harem, and Kaori is her next target. But Yoko is not about to let her love go, so Saki offers to settle the matter with a duel, using the bodies of Kaori and Saki's current pet, Sayaka Tamura, as the battlegrounds. The duelist, who makes the other's partner orgasm first, wins, the contesting parties having swapped. The possibility of revenge also sweetens the pot for Saki, as it turns out that Yoko is her former lover, who abandoned her three years ago. Based on the manga by Satoshi Akifuji, this is an entertaining and well-executed entry in the idol subgenre of anime porn, compared with Spotlight or Cool Device's Fallen Angel Rena. Oh my god! It's like they're describing two completely different anime. And granted, it's porn. But this, like, that first edition was almost exact, was very similar, similarly dismissive as Popolov. I mean, Popolov is way worse, but, like, that was completely different. Let me read you the first article again. It's the same anime, Parade Parade. Two short stories, supposedly of an erotic nature, based on Satoshi Akifuji's manga expose of the entertainment world. In the first, a pop star and her manager pleasure each other after her first concert. In the second, rival stars play a dangerous game that involves avoiding the toilet for as long as possible, with a payoff that may indeed be erotic for someone, somewhere. A similar stretching of the boundaries of good taste can be found in Phantom P in Professor Payne. How the mighty have fallen with this one. Yeah, like... Or redeem themselves. They actually got me interested in watching that fucking hentai. With this third edition. Insane. Sheesh. I hate it until I watch it, then I get to say it's a deconstruction of the idol genre. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Good to see you, Photogen. I'm happy to see you. I'm, I'm uh, still streaming. I don't know how, for how much longer. I wanted to, uh, we were going to do 50 entries, and I've only done like 20. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to finish PA, basically. The PA section. Uh, but... This was a crazy change. Big change! Anyone like the Spider-Man reference? Uh, no. <laughs> Negative and positive. Wow. Wow. Completely different. Very, very notable, actually. I think all these changed ones are going to be very important. For sure. I also have to make sure I write that up here. Um... completely revised well keep it up <laughs> thank you much appreciated that is insane I'm happy I looked thank you. this is why I'm doing the comparison this really was why I'm doing it crazy okay we're back sorry for that delay we were about we were just about to wa read paranoia agent detectives Keiichi Ikari and Mitsuhiro Maniwa are assigned to the case of Tsukiko Saki, the designer of a popular cute animal character in the style of Hello Kitty, who has been the victim of a vicious attack. They are not the only people on Tsuki Tsukiko's trail. So too is tabloid journalist Akio, although he soon falls prey to the same criminal. The attacker is Lil Slugger, a shadowy vigilante wielding a bat battered metal bat, some might say a golden bat, who stalks this, a series of victims, a golden bat being like the, they link to the series Golden Bat, who stalks the, a series of victims in a dark and forbidding Tokyo. 
What the investigators fail to realize is that they may not be hunting a single human at all, but a complex social malaise, starting with one small exaggeration that gets progressively larger until the victim's stories of a baseball bat and golden inline skates feel feed an urban myth that rampages out of control. Is the kid real? Or is he called into being by the stress, unease, and sheer paranoia of living in the big city? The first TV project from Satoshi Kon... Only... Only... The first TV project from Satoshi Kon is a masterpiece of, ur of urban legend. Just gonna put that positive real quick. Combining the psychological knots of Cone's earlier Perfect Blue and the thir th thepervated, thep thepervated, that's, another, that's a new word for me, thepervated, oh, it's not that it's a weird word, they just, they just typoed, they didn't, there's no space, and the perverted gamesmanship of David Fincher's Seven. Cone exploits the longer running time of TV for all it's worth, setting up supposedly disconnected events that soon reveal a mortifying ripple effect. What at first seems to be a simple political procedural, sh procedural soon gains new complexity. The viewer's attention is drawn first to clues in the background and script, such as the relationship of character names and to phases of the moon or the names of animals hidden in their names. This too is a red herring, as later episodes reveal Paranoia Agent to be in an involved meditation on the futility of false hopes and sanitized dreams. As with Perfect Blue and Millennium Actress, Paranoia Agent often makes the entertainment industry itself the subject of its ire, with suspicious deaths at an anime studio and later satirical references to superheroics. But Cone also homes, hones in on more general modern issues, opening with crowds of com commuters in the style of Gantz, each studiously ignoring the other while yammering in inanities on a mobile phone to a distant listener. Asides and moments in each episode point, in, ep in each episode, point to a series of unseen connections between the characters in the style of Human Crossing, particularly with relation to an internet chat room in which three buddies make a suicide pact only for one of them to turn out to not be a dying man, but a young girl. Shades here of Hiroshi Shizimu, Shiz Shimizu's movie I I Ikinai. Kon also loves postmodern angles on familiar cliches, focusing in on episode on one focusing in one episode on a day in the life of a cop whose main contribution will be a, a, will be to apprehend a character later on. Yeah. Only TV project. Only. PA introduced me to Kana. Also, this was the first. Also, was the first mature anime I ever watched. Nice. I need to watch more seinen beyond ed just edgy gore fests. Yeah. I don't know if I can do the seinen exactly, but because it's not. It's an original anime, right? Isn't it? Yep. It's an anime. It, there is a novel by Satoshi Kon from 2004, published by Katakawa Shoten, Horror Bunko, imprint. Good article. Parappa the Rapper. They do have it in the first edition. The Adventures of a Happy Dancing Dog in His Ongoing Attempts to Impress a Flower Called Sunny. Based on the surreal 1996 PlayStation game, the series features new characters and music from the original designers. They did not change that at all. Yeah, same same thing. Okay, that's it. That's it. Parasite Heaven from 1996. Okay, very flaccid uh, synopsis, but that's still better than Papa Love. Now we're roll. Now we're 
cruising. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I want to see. See, this is thoughtful. Um, based on a manga by Billy Dog creator Fujiko Fujio A, <clears throat> and featuring the screenwriting debut of Satoru Akahori, uh, whose zany output would dominate comedy anime for the coming decade. So they would actually they actually point out a, a writer here. That's good. See, that's what I want. Postmodernism. That group suicide episode was wild. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Benjamin. That's like the one that sticks out to me. That and the anime episode for sure. I really gotta rewatch it. I'm currently trying to convince you to watch it. Yeah. It doesn't help that it's not a No, Funimation has it now. Yeah, that's right. I wonder if it's on Crunchyroll. Oh my god, if it was on Crunchyroll, I would watch it. I would rewatch it like very I would <laughs> sooner rather than later. Yeah! Paranoid Yeah, Paranoid Agents on Crunchyroll, guys! Get to watching it. That shit used to be, like, not available for a long time. Hell yeah. Dude, I actually want to put that on my list, actually. Cause that, I want to, I really want to rewatch it, to be honest with you. Uh, for a noir. Yeah. Yeah, that's in my watch list, bro. Let's go. That's great. I'm happy to see it's on Crunchyroll. Uh, where am I? Passport Hemde. Nothing changed. Pastel Yumi. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Another magical girl story from the people who brought you Creamy Mommy. Right. It's the same... Uh, Pastel Yumi was uh, in that lineage, the, the the time slot. So they had Creamy Mommy, Piero had Creamy Mommy, and then right after that aired the Safari one, the Safari Girl. Uh, Peppa Papa, I don't remember. I don't remember the one, that one, but it's the sec that's the second one, and then they aired the th third one. I think there's four. There's four, and I believe Pastel Yumi's the last one. So it's a shame. It's a shame they didn't really pick up on that connection. Let me see where where uh, I read it down. God, I just I opened all these freaking notepad. I just there it is. Uh... Piero. Yeah, so Fridays at 6 p.m. they aired Creamy Mommy, and then they did Persia. That's what I was thinking of. Magical Fairy Persia. Magical Emmy after that, the year after. And then Pastel Yumi. Um, and after Pastel Yumi, it was replaced by a news program, and that's what it's been ever since. Um, so that's the their short-lived four-series four run, kind of their own little dynasty to, to um, imitate Toei. Uh, and there's some other notable ones that I wrote down for Piero, but it's sort of their different time play, different um, time slots and stuff. Obviously, Erisiatsu is a big deal for them, and that's not a Magical Girl series necessarily, but I think Erisiatsu is very much in the same spirit as Magical Girl series, and probably did help them to some extent with Creamy Mommy, etc. Fancy Lala in 1998 is another pretty... It's, I think it's kind of lumped in the same as those Piero series. But it's much later. It's almost 10 years after um, Pastel Yumi. Um, but I and I think it's an idol show. So it makes sense that it's lumped in with, because it's very similar with the rest of them. But yeah, it aired on Sundays as well. And then you have Tenshi Ni Naruman, which I am watching. That's more of a magical girlfriend kind of show. Like, right, with like... The main girl doesn't have like powers or anything. She's not like a magical girl, but it's a weird show. If you're watching it with me in the, in the definitive anime chat, you know. There's something very distinctly episodic and imaginative and 
whimsical about that show that I think does kind of play into um, Magical Girl stuff. So just because the show isn't Magical Girl, I would say that it that doesn't necessarily disqualify it for having some influence. Tokyo Mew Mew as well, uh, followed by Mermaid Melody at the same time slot. Um, so Saturdays at 8 a.m. they have Tokyo Mew Mew, and then after it finished was Mermaid Melody. And then Sugar Sugar Rune as well, um, not in the same time slot, Saturdays at 7 a.m. It was close, but I, I, it was, Mew Mew was TV IHE, and then Sugar Sugar Rune is TV Tokyo. I have all this stuff written down because um, uh, I went on a, a little rabbit hole. That'll probably be an upcoming video. Probably. Um, Adult Swim actually had to air a disclaimer warning to people not to imitate the character. Yeah, fair. I would argue the loop on part two episode. Part two anime is more PG-13 than the manga, though. Okay. Persia. Yeah, Persia. Pastor Yumi's very cute. Yeah, the last of the four. Creamy My Persia, Emmy, and Pastel Yumi. Yep. I totally know. I've read it. Part 2 does have some nudity with some episodes, though. Some of the third's pretty irredeemable in the manga. <laughs> Shortly after this, was practically a decade. Um, no, it was three years. No, it's not three. Four? Hold on. That was not practically a decade. It was like the first half of the decade, which is still... Yeah, four shows is nothing to sniff at. They're the, they are the closest that, that they get to Toei. They are the closest out of any of the studios. Ashi Pro had three series. Um, it had four, technically, but it was... It was three in the same time slot, and then they had Sweet Mint running at the same time as Idol Yoko. Um, but then that one, that's from 89 to 93, which is one, two, three... It, Mary Bell wasn't even, like... It wasn't even right after Idol Yoko. It was, like, a year after. And then, yeah, no... Creamy Mommy's from Creamy Mommy to Pastel Yumi is 83 to 86. So it's, it's not that long. Meaning, meanwhile, Toei's original dynasty ran from 1967 to 1979. Well, 75. Unofficial. Um, not, and that's not even all of them, technically. Like, Laravel's. Loon Loon and Laravel are considered part of that um majoko line the majoko series um but they're not in the same time slot and they air much late much much longer afterwards it's a whole thing but it's still not even close tenaru yeah i'm pretty sure adult swim skipped over the more lewd episodes i wouldn't have been able to watch it when i was younger if they showed those well i believe some episodes came out that you yeah uh anyway Anywho, tell Mr. Wolf that Duncan lives at 867 North Maple Drive. Pata Re... Pata... Lero. Okay. I thought it was spelled differently, but fair. I'm just making sure. I'm just double-checking uh, Pastel Yumi. Pateria. Wow. I didn't realize this. Um, the series was the first to introduce homosexuality to TV anime audiences. And the nudity is reasonably tasteful, allowing for some floral backgrounds, and mostly male. Interesting. Um, I'd say 
there's an article actually. That was alright. Sorry, I'm being not as stirred up. I'm a little tired. Three and a half, almost four hours stream. Um, first to introduce homosexuality to TV anime audiences. My parents were okay with stuff like TV, people on m and stuff were understanding the off limits. Pedder is who can do representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Padma inverted. It's a lot of PA. It's a lot of PA. Don't fucking come on, don't end don't fucking explain the ending. Uh It's not that big of a spoiler, but it's it's close. Ending like Ponyo, with the world explained, but the central relationship still immensely unlikely to succeed. thing like uh, a massively ambitious movie that perhaps really should have been made in ver vertigin vertiginous 3d vertiginous th should have been made in vertigin vertiginous 3d given the treatment of say gravity or inception you know the light like the sandra bullock movie gravity and uh inception it could have truly dragged Japanese animation to the forefront of experiments in Cartesian space. As it is, it is an intriguing exercise in reversals and re-reversals, albeit one that falls short. Failing, failing up, you might say. Weird. Gonna head out, gonna go to work at a 12-hour shift tomorrow. Wanna watch more Slam Dunk? I'm happy you're watching Slam Dunk, let's fucking go! Hell yeah! Big fan of that show! Let's go! Have a good one. This was written during the 3D craze, wasn't it? I guess. Yeah. I don't know why you would want it to be in 3D. I don't, I don't think they get... They don't, I don't think they made a good enough argument there. Maybe it's still positive, though.
to send that to Beyond Ghibli. Show him the kind of competition he has. Because he made a video on Padma Inverted. And I know he likes, like, Yoshiura stuff. Like, Time of Eve and everything. Here we go! Pataleba! And, uh... After this one is Paul's Miracle War. And then... That's it. So, I actually, I'm gonna read Paul's Miracle War first, and we're gonna end on Pat Labor. Paul's Miracle War. Oh, cute for younger for younger viewers. It's magic. Let me just double check the first edition. Padoleba. Ending it on this one. Here we go. At the close of the 20th century, a rise in global sea levels forces a massive building program in Japan, causing the creation of new labor construction robots. In a series that effortlessly incorporates human drama and comedy with hard science fiction, the police set up a patrol labor division to deal with the new crime that new technology brings. Let me just keep double checking the first edition. The team behind Pat Labor is arguably the finest assembly of talents in modern anime, rivaled only by Hayao Miyazaki's cohorts at Studio Ghibli and the erratic Gainax Collective. Written in direct opposition to the gung-ho conflicts of Gundam. Also, I would... When they say that, like, the, the, you know, the headgear is only rivaled by Hayao Miyazaki's cohorts and the erratic Gainax Collective. I don't know. Because you have... You do have Tomino's um, collection of, of people who he goes working with Gundam, then Ideon, then Sabungal... Then Dunbine, then Elgheim, then Zeta Gundam, then double Zeta Gun. Like they, they are fucking cranking it over there. Then you have Kogawa, you have Yoshikazu Yasuhiko for a little while. You know, I don't know. You also have Dazaki's crew in that time. Granted, they're not as prolific in as of '86, when, or I'm sorry, '89. Yeah, 89. By the time you have 89 with, with Pat Labor in that era, you don't necessarily have Dezaki's group working as, as hard. Like, you have Onisame and you have Blackjack and Ace 2. I don't know. It's a little, a little hyperbola hyperbolic, I think, but it's fine. Written in direct opposition to the gung-ho conflicts of Gundam and the post-apocalyptic violence of the Road Warrior, Pat Labor's creators posit a future world where humanity muddles through regardless, and being a giant robot pilot is just another job. Taken as the Space, for space Force in Wings of Honimis, by misfits unable to secure work in more glamorous sectors. The Tribulations of Special Vehicle Division 2 are consequently dogged by idle bureaucrats, budget cuts, interfering R&D officers, and feuds within the group. Girlish rookie Noah Izumi, disaffected techno-millionaire's son Azuma Shinohara, and ultra-cool Captain Goto occupy central stage, though the other cast members are some of the most well-realized characters in anime. High praise. 
from bad-tempered gun nut Ota to henpecked husband Shin Shinshi, down to the gentle giant Hiromi and competent but snooty half-American visitor Kanaka Clancy, whose role was greatly expanded from the original manga. Just checking the third edition still. All contribute to a truly marvelous ensemble. The series is loaded with subplots that put many live-action shows to shame, including the unrequited love of Goto for his better qualified opposite number Shinobu, uh, hilariously, hilariously telegraphed in a spoof episode that featured the pair forced to share a room in a love hotel, Ota's desperately, desperately lonely existence in a Blade Runner pastiche scripted by Oshii, and Noah's deeply respectful love for her pet labor, uh, Alphonse. Made on video because sponsorship was initially unavailable to make it for TV, the show was soon heading to, for broadcast and movie success. Some of the TV and video stores stories are downright goofy, like the white alligator in the sewers urban myth and a ghost story which spirit with spirits that need to be appeased. But there's also a long and carefully evolved storyline along about industrial espionage between rival labor manufacturers, the exploitation of children, and the lengths people go to for money. Theatrical outings extend this dark agenda further. Patley the, the movie, directed by Oshii, uses a threat of destruction by a suicidal visionary terrorist to examine the extent to which man depends on technology and the dangers involved in that dependency. Noah and the returning American labor captain Kanaka have to overcome their antagonism to save Tokyo from flood and disaster. I don't really know if that's... Noah and the recurring, returning American labor captain Kanaka have to overcome their antagonism to save Tokyo from flood and disaster. This makes them pit like they're rivals, and I... Maybe that's right, but like... I never really noticed that. I don't feel like that's a huge defining feature of that movie. But, fair enough. Uh, Pat Labor 2 rounded off this seri the series in a brilliantly contrived manner. Brilliantly contrived manner? I don't know if... It, maybe that's a positive word. <laughs> Set in 2002, after the original team members have gone their separate ways, in fe it features the attempt of a disaffected ex-soldier to orchestrate a military coup. The former members of the Pat Labor team reunite one last time to stop him, and the film includes some real treats for long-term fans including an explanation for Shinobu's eternal split spin spinsterhood, Shinobu's internal spinsterhood, and the rare sight of Goto losing his temper. The the second movie, oh, wow, they actually, they actually added this in the fucking third edition. Holy crap, and of course they have this opinion, which I don't share. Added. The unquestionable peak of the franchise. The second movie secured Oshii's chances of directing Gits and shares with its successor a similar mood, pace and political cynicism it also features i don't want i want to read i want to write the whole thing down actually chilling images of a japan returning all too swiftly to martial law a topic that Oshi would approach again in Jinro as well as guest designs from Shoji Kawamori and Hajime Katoki. Jeez Louise, I mean, keep going. <laughs> Just sucking off Pat Labor 2 a bunch. Christopher Gans, who directed the live action movie of Crying Freeman, 
reportedly optioned Pat Labor 2 for a remake in the early 21st century, impressed with its ability to involve its cast in action to which they always seem to arrive a minute too late. This marginalization of the little people is a motif that runs through the entire series and adds to the realism. It also it is also a fundamental feature of the third Pat Labor movie. Oh no, sorry, they didn't add this part. Political cynicism. They actually don't add. They actually have. It also features the chilling images of Japan returning all too swiftly to its martial law. All of that. The only thing that they added is to call the second movie the peak of the franchise and that it secured him for directing gifts. It also is a fundamental feature of the third Pat Labor movie, uh, w 13, WX111, uh, I, 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 or 113? I don't know what W is supposed to be in which Tokyo is threatened by a mutant monster. With Oshii conspicuously absent as director as he was for, from the inferior Jinro. I don't remember if uh, they mentioned. They probably, I'm pretty sure they've made, a, they've made their. Script with a hollow heart, whirl of contradictions, lazy plotting, skillfully animated but aimless film, Cold War thriller with a respray. Yeah, that's right. Um, Pat Labor entry also calls it inferior. Tell, retells an earlier story, early story from Masami Yuki's Pat Labor manga, but concentrates on the guest stars, relegating the central cast almost completely to cameo roles. Seemingly recognizing the malachronism of catching up with the future date on which the original was set. 13 also takes the interesting creative decision to depict its setting as imagined in the 1980s, with bulky computer terminals and, clunk and chunky cell phones, acknowledging itself in an alternate timeline from our own world. Sadly for Pat Labor, accidents in rights acquisitions have had a similar effect on the series itself. Okay. Completely to cameo roles. They did add some more about 13, by the way. To cameo roles. Seemingly recognizing the mount. They added the. Se seemingly recognizing the malachronism of catching up with the future date on which the original was set. 13 also takes the interesting creative decision to depict its setting as imagined in the 1980s. About Sadly for Pat Labor, accidents in rights acquisitions have had a similar effect on the series itself. The two movies were well dubbed and promoted by manga entertainment, but reached a far larger audience than the video and TV incarnations, which were sold to a, the, sim the smaller distributor USMC, US Manga Corps. The series was also lampooned in the erotic pastiche Tokyo Private Police. Although luckily only anime encyclopedists remember this. They, they added that part. Added, although luckily only anime encyclopedists remember this. And you're calling attention to it. To erotic pastiche mention. In theaters and on video, W13 movie it was also accompanied by the min mini Pato shorts. Added mention of mini Pato. Humus prestiges of Pat Labor made in part by motion capturing paper cut out puppets and feeding the data into a computer, which then rendered them as 3D artifacts. No, we don't know why either. The, short was the shorts were directed by Kenji Kamiyama, who would go on to take up Oshii's mantle on the Ghost in the Shell franchise. The next generation, next generation, is a live action series. Um, 
shot in 45 minute episodes but premiered in Japan Japanese cinemas in order to qualify as films rather than co consigned to the amnesiac schedules of television. Mamoru Oshii is prominent in the credits as a writer and director of many of the sequences. Although billed as a sequel with a new group taking over duties, with the exception of Shigeo Shiba, the former mechanic, now section leader and played by his original voice actor, uh, Shigeru Chiba. So many elements of Next Generation repeat the formulae and conflicts of the original, klutzy but earnest new girl, cynical foreigner, even to the extent of a sound-alike names that we just that we might just as reasonably call it a remake. Arguably much of the original Pat Labor's enduring strength lay in its animated form and the independence of it afforded from the failings of mainstream Japanese television. While there was certainly more to the original than the robot action, Next Generation must endure the twin indignities of low budget CG and what passes for acting in the Japanese mainstream. Jesus. Ironically, for something that derives its name recognition from its past in animation, the labors in Next Generation look great until they actually have to move. God, they're really negative about this fucking live action show for whatever reason. Pat Labor. Live action. Let's see, picking out some stuff. Um, finest team, finest assembly of talents. Marvelous Ensemble loaded with subplots that put many live action shows to shame. Yeah. And then Pat Labor 2 specifically. Uh, the unquestionable peak of the franchise. I'm just looking for if they, they actually cite anything about the movie that they like <laughs> the first movie. Nope. Nope, they just describe it. Fuck. Let me see if W3, they have a particular... No. No. It's so interesting that they put WX13, they mention how, like, it concentrates on the guest stars relegating the central cast almost completely to cameo roles, when you could say pretty much the same thing about Pat Labor 2. It's just Goto the movie. Uh... Is it just me, or do you do y'all find also find Pat Labor overrating? overrated like it's good not that good yeah I love the movie the first movie I have pretty strong feelings about the second movie and I need to rewatch the OVA I'm okay with the, the show I think I'm, I'm okay with watching it once I want to watch the OVA again 
I really enjoyed it. I really want to watch it again. Um, I also haven't even watched uh, New Files, actually. So that would be a great excuse for me to do that. I gotta write that down. I'm gonna write that and the uh, uh, pa um, paranoia and for freaking the other three before I fucking forget on my list of stuff I want to watch. Hold on, this is just for me. Sorry. Um. files. What was that other one? I was like, oh, we, did, we should get to that. Fuck it. Um, no, I think that's it. Yeah. I really enjoyed the OVA. I'm in the middle of the TV series now, which is a different flavor to it. Yeah. Contrived isn't necessarily negative, but yeah. Highly like we're good. This makes it more sarcastic. Bar oh, she wrote Junro. Yeah, they say that. I think. Yeah, pretty sure they did. I've not heard good things about the live action. Still waiting for that new animated project in the works. Yeah. I'm curious. Do they always mention live action adaptation or only for big series? Um. I mean, I would have no idea, right? I don't know every everything that they talk about. Um. I would have no idea. I would assume so. It seems like if there is one, they usually do. To be fair, most fans seem to dislike third movie. Um, what did I think of it? What did I give that one? I, I kind of forget, actually. It, yeah, I gave it a meh. Because it's just like, I, I can respect doing something that, like that different, but um, only if it's good. <laughs> and I, was, I wasn't really invested in the third act in particular. It just was, yeah. I'm curious, do they always, yeah. I know a lot of four kids actors were in the dub for the Pat Labor TV series. Oh, really? Wow. Movie series is my least favorite. I still like it a lot. Straight up detective story. Well, yeah, until it until it stops being a detective story. And that's when I lose interest. Personally. Okay. Well. Guess that'll do it. <laughs> Four hours. You know, it's so funny. I'm st Even after this, like four hours looping of this and then like all the streams that I've been doing this fucking 30 minute Moomin loop I'm still not sick of it I'm still not sick of it it's unbelievable I cannot be I unbelievable therefore I do not believe it wow just great it's just about 10 p.m. now for me so I think that'll about about do it any other questions queries theories Hey, well, I'm going to stream Friday, but probably not for late, <laughs> probably not late or whatever, because I'm presenting my panel at Anime Boston this weekend, Saturday, April 8th at the Heinz Convention Center <laughs> at Anime Boston. Check me out. So uh, how Mamoru hosted a directed TV anime. It'll be Saturday at 9 a.m. I know it's early literally the earliest it could possibly be but i hope for those of you who happen to be going to that, that weekend you of you uh might stop by and i have the i have my practice i have two versions of the practice recorded uh when i did it for my patrons i still have to kind of work out and feel how i how i feel about um putting that somewhere or sharing that because i kind of still want to present this at other panels potentially um and i don't want to just like make it a youtube video right so but i still want to make it available for patrons and stuff to experience potentially i also don't mind like uh uh sharing we'll be posting the panel on, your ch on the channel yeah so that's the thing it's like i really want to still i also just don't know how well it will do to be recorded i kind of don't know if i will actually because only because um the way i have my things set up i'm like what do i record it with i would record it with my phone but i would want the script on my phone because i have the i have to go to the i have to go to the room and check 
that I could do, whether I could do this, but my ideal is that the mic can be moved around and I can walk around and like hand it to people and talk because the, the panel involves a lot of participation. And so I don't want to have a situation where I'm calling on someone and they walk over the mic to them. Like, I don't have time for that. I just don't have the time for because it's the way the, the panel is paced. I only have an hour. Um, so I really like the idea of either people just kind of shouting out or just talking out loud or whatever, or I have the mic and I'm walking around like, what do you think? And I'm talking with them. I'm making conversation. I feel like that's very interesting and uh, unique for a panel because most people who are at panels, right? They're at the PowerPoint and they're behind the desk the whole time. And I don't mind doing that. That's kind of what I envisioned it at first. But the more I was thinking about it, I was like, if that's possible. Yeah, but we'll have to see. I remember the third movie feels more like a kaiju film in the second. Yeah, it is. It is a kaiju film. Monster of a Stream, great work. Thank you, Mr. Guy. Thank you for coming in the, in the tail end of that, but uh, I hope you enjoy the, the VOD too. There's some spicy shit early on. Oh my god. Not early on. Like, the first hour of this stream is me doing some bookkeeping stuff, but um, when we get into it, it was fucking wild. <laughs> the moon music slaps. Yeah! Thanks for helping me get through my work. Great luck on the panel. We'll be posting it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's my thoughts to it. Good night to all. Yeah. But I do want to. I do want to have it accessible in some capacity, because I know there's some people who would never, will never see it because they live in different countries and stuff. So I do want to figure that out. But also the thing is, I, there's no way I can post this on YouTube because of the way I'm using clips, like full three minute, four minute clips. No, ain't no way. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Just remember, if people are shouting it out and you're responding to repeat and paraphrase, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'll have to watch it later. I live on the West Coast, so yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, even in different countries and stuff. But I have to figure it out. Anyway. <laughs> you guys are great. Uh, I hope to see you Friday, hopefully. Yo, peace. Is it just me or I think, I think that this stream always ends on this track. It feels like that. <laughs> it feels like that to me.